Hey everybody, welcome to the first day of 12 Days of Scrub, which is going to be the series where I'm going to be compiling my favorite videos and just topics kind of together and double uploading to make sure that, you know, it's just some extra content because I know you guys are sitting around and might be bored or maybe not, but uh, yeah. Today it's going to be all the fighting videos I've ever had on the channel in one massive compilation, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Press the like button if you want and be sure to get the new merch. I'll see you guys soon and uh, Merry Christmas. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely incredible day I know I am and if you are be sure to press the like button in the next five seconds And you'll actually get good luck for the next 13 years Anyways as you guys can tell from the title today I'm gonna be talking about this one time in middle school and my school bus went uh, absolutely rambunctious and a riot started Yeah, that's right. Don't ask me how a uh, school riot started on my bus. We're getting where we're getting there That's why it's called a story time, but uh, yeah, let's just put it gently, I think there was 37 kids on the bus and 27 ended up getting suspended for fighting. So, uh, just your typical normal day on the school bus, you know? We were sitting there, Oscar the Grouch was teaching us our alphabet, and next thing I know, Becky from Long Beach is beating the crap out of Sharon from Augustus, and nobody knows what's going on. There's teeth flying everywhere, chunks of hair. I'm pretty sure at one point I saw the ghost of Yoda actually hitting the Nene on top of a kid's passed out body. Uh, in reality, though, it was just a pretty crazy situation that happened on the bus, and I think you guys are gonna find it interesting, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, I don't know how many of you guys ride the bus, but to put it gently, it's actually one of the worst experiences of all time, alright? You gather up a bunch of kids at, like, 6.30 in the morning and tell them to sit on this giant yellow Twinkie and ride it to class, and, uh, you can't be too loud, you can't make too much noise, but at the same time, you're not allowed to sleep either. So you basically lock these kids in purgatory, and for 30 minutes, we basically have a no adult supervision whatsoever because the adult the only adult on the bus is kind of in charge of not crashing the six ton bus into a wall with a bunch of screaming kids in the background and trust me that's a lot harder than it sounds all right I don't know if you've ever tried to drive with 37 kids screaming at all shades of the morning when you've only slept for three hours but uh it's pretty difficult I know firsthand because I ended up crashing a school bus off the edge of the Grand Canyon but you know we don't talk about that I'm on parole all right I got my ankle monitor on I'm good but riding the bus is actually a terrible experience especially when you don't really get to pick the people on your bus which you never did because there were always those kids for some reason that when it was 6 30 in the morning had way too much energy going on like the type of energy where you were like oh my god Derek please shut your mouth before I slap you with a box of otter pops but when you don't have a box of otter pops nearby you start to ask yourself questions I rode the bus with a good friend of mine named Devin who I still talk to to this day and we would kind of sit together and in the morning we were pretty quiet because we were normal we would split some pop tarts sit back maybe play some Pokemon cards talk about Star Wars you know usual usual kids stuff, alright? I, I don't really know. We were like in 6th grade at the time, and there were obviously 8th graders on the bus, so we kind of just kept to ourselves and were pretty quiet in the morning. But there was this one group of kids who I'm gonna name delinquents for the rest of this video, alright? And I'm saying delinquents because that's what they are. I think out of the group of these four kids, three of them are actually in prison now, so that just goes to show you that uh, I didn't go to a fantastic middle school. But regardless, in middle school, when you're on a bus with future kids that are gonna have a felony, you just kind of learn to keep your mouth shut and let them be rambunctious. But this group of kids, the delinquents, somehow managed to disrupt absolutely everybody on this one particular morning. So, even in middle school, there were little cliques and stuff, and you had the delinquents who sat near the front of the bus and were really loud and rambunctious and caused a bunch of problems, and then there was another group of kids on our bus that were kind of the more jockey, athletic kids, you know, the football players, the soccer players, those type of kids, the people that definitely were a, a little more <clears throat> athletically engaged than a bunch of delinquents were. And these delinquents were being obsessively loud this one morning, alright? Like, to the point where I think if I actually had Chewbacca sitting next to me on the bus and he went out one of those like, I would be less annoyed than the delinquents are. But, you know, it's me and my boy Devin. Neither of us is gonna say anything, because we were pretty small. Like, I was really kind of a, a short, chubby kid up until, like, my junior year of high school. So I knew I wasn't gonna say anything to the delinquents, because the delinquents, you know, uh, very true to their name, were very good at doing the wrong things. So if you criticize them, you were gonna end up with a knuckle sandwich in the back of the bus, with your underwear so far inside your small intestine that your body just accepted it as a new organ. And I wasn't really trying to live that life, alright? I like my intestines like I like most things. Not not broken, okay? Like, uh, let's be honest here. I think everybody likes their intestines actually working and, you know, filling out the filtration needs of the human body. But regardless, these kids were being incredibly loud, and they ended up messing with one of the jocks, like, benches, because the bus seats are kind of benches. I think you guys know what I'm saying. And, like, moved it, and it messed up one of them doing their homework. So the jocks kind of turned around, and, and they started yelling at the kids. And it's still only, like, 6.45 in the morning. Why don't you guys ever shut up? Like, sit down. Nobody likes you. You guys are disrupting the entire bus. And, you know, 
half the bus is kind of like, yeah, yeah, true, like, this is, this is a fact, you are, in fact, being disruptive, so, a, a bunch of other people are like, yeah, can you guys shut up, and then the delinquents talk back, and are like, oh, you guys think you're so much better than everyone, just because you're athletic, everybody else is, uh, tired too, I'm sorry that we have energy, yada, 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 and, like, a, another decent portion of the bus, the louder kids are like, yeah, screw you guys, you don't get to control when we're quiet or when we're loud, like, it's not up to you, so at this point, most of the bus is kind of yelling at each other in this argument, and finally, one of the delinquents is like, you know, if you really got a problem, man, if you got a problem with how loud I am on the bus, we can handle this after school, how about we square up then, let's square up, and they're like, alright, let's fight, so, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if what you just witnessed makes sense, but let me spell it out for you. The jocks and the kids on the bus who like it quiet, and the kids that are obnoxious and loud, have just agreed to have somewhat of a gang fight in the middle of school, alright? Yay, yay! Uh, they're gonna fight after school right by the buses, which is fantastic for me, you know? It's an average Tuesday. I'm really looking forward to getting involved in a gang fight. It's really one of my biggest passions in life. When I wake up every morning, I always ask myself, Ryan, how can you get involved in a gang fight? And people screaming on the bus is always the way I knew the stream was gonna come true. No, in reality, I'm kinda like, yeah, there's no way this is gonna happen. Everybody's gonna calm down you know, there's no way 37 kids are actually gonna fight outside the bus. And you know, I was right. There was no way 37 kids were gonna fight outside of the bus. So smart, look at me. So the amount of kids involved obviously lets it get around the school very, very quickly that, um, you know, there's going to be a fight on the bus after school. On a certain bus, it's going to be huge. There's like 37 kids involved. And most kids are freaking out all day like, bro, did you hear about the bus fight? Bro, did you hear about the bus fight? And obviously, kids are really bad at keeping secrets. You know, they're not very slick at uh, making things be low key. So by the end of the day, a principal or two might have found out, all right? Um, I didn't snitch. I'm not a snitch. You guys know that. I, I don't believe in snitchery. I feel like it is the highest level of disrespect that one can give. But, you know, at the end of the day, I was also kind of happy that I wasn't going to have to sit on a bus having a gang fight. So the principal goes over the intercom and says, I don't know who's on this bus, but I will let anyone know that anyone found fighting on the bus or doing anything on the bus will be barred from the bus for the rest of the year, meaning that you can't ride the bus, which, you know, sounds like a, a hell of a punishment until you realize nobody likes riding the bus anyways, all right? And we're middle schoolers. It's not like we're really out here thinking about, uh, the socioeconomic impact of my parents having to wake up earlier to drive me to school will be, we're like, damn, if we fight, we're just not going to have to ride the bus, which means all of the delinquents immediately are like, yeah, I don't have to ride the bus anymore, like YOLO, like even more of a reason to fight, haha, -ha, we're going to send it, we're going to beat these kids. So the day ends and we get near the bus, and sure enough, the two groups are kind of sitting there, like staring at each other, just talking mad crap to each other, alright? They're like cursing each other out, causing problems. Oh, no, you guys swing first. No, bro, you swing first, bro. You're lucky my friends are holding me back, bro. Uh, and then, you know, the delinquents are like, yeah, well, your mom's ugly, stupid, and you play sports because you, you're not athletic, though, bro. Like, you're not athletic. You know, middle school insults. It's not really too intense, alright? I've heard better rows come out the back end of my grandma's oven. So they're just there kind of standing off, and finally, they both realize that none of them are, like, actually ballsy enough to make the first move, okay? As much as they all talked crap all day about how they were going to beat each other on the school bus, everybody knows at the end of the day, middle schoolers are mostly all talk. So, everybody gets on the bus, and we're just chilling, and, and the first, like, 10 minutes of the bus ride is actually one of the calmest bus rides I've ever been on. Everyone was super well-behaved, everyone was super nice to each other, there wasn't anyone screaming, no one doing anything crazy. It was, like, you know, really, really calm. And, uh, I always thought... The, the phrase, the calm before the storm, was just kind of weird. Like, it wasn't a real thing. A and that's when I experienced it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not even kidding you. One second, it's totally chilling. It's totally lit. Everybody's being nice. Everybody's getting along. There's no big deal. 30 seconds later, the two groups are up in the middle of the bus, like, squaring up again. And this time, I don't know what snapped, what happened. I think somebody threw something at somebody that was the catalyst. But they're, like, in each other's faces, screaming. What, you guys really want to do this? Like, I thought you guys just backed down by the bus. We didn't back down. You backed down. What are you guys doing? There's probably... 13 kids on either side like this is a pretty big group of kids about to throw down in the middle of the bus and the bus driver starts yelling you know hey sit down sit down and I honestly feel so bad for bus drivers all right here was this fat middle-aged man just wanted to go home and watch Judge Duty and here's like 27 kids screaming about to beat each other on his bus that's not your typical day that's not what you expect to happen when you go to work hey honey I'm uh, off to drive kids to school I, I know you're probably expecting me to get in a fight and have to punch a couple kids in the face but I'm really hoping that doesn't have to happen you know like that's never something that you're prepared for as a human being and I don't blame them because no one should really have to be prepared for that because it's kind of ridiculous and all of a sudden, it snapped. One of the delinquent kids reached back and just slapped one of the jocks in the face, which led to basically all 13 people on either side immediately picking opponent and just 
wailing on each other. So every other kid on the bus, like the other 10 kids that weren't involved in this feud and didn't really have a horse in the race, are obviously looking on in shock as kids are just wailing on each other. And it starts to spread throughout the bus. There's people fighting everywhere. There's people going like under the seats and kicking people in the ribs. Like th there is an absolute brawl breaking out in the middle of this bus. And obviously, I don't really know what to do. 12 year old Scrubby wasn't exactly like, okay, what I've learned from multiple games of StarCraft is that to make the peace, nah dog, I'm screaming like a banshee. I'm like, whoa, whoa, because <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, all right? Was it cool for them to fight on the bus? Hell no. Was it entertaining? Hell yes. So I'm getting in the moment. I'm like, dude, they're fighting on the bus. This is insane. Like I said, people are getting kicked in the ribs. A couple kids were like wailing on each other, like had pinned somebody to the, bu the, the bench and were just wailing on the side of their head. Like these kids are wailing on each other, right? And like I said, there's probably like 13 kids on either side. A fight falls onto a kid and his girlfriend and the girlfriend gets hurt. So that kid starts fighting everybody. So now this kid's 1v26ing on the bus. There's like 27 kids fighting on this bus and our bus driver, bless their soul, has no idea what to do. I, I don't think it's common training. Like when you're getting trained to be a bus driver, you raise your hand. Um, if every single kid on the bus starts fighting all at once, what am I supposed to do? What is my go-to method? Is there a, a way for me to break up the fight or do I just wait it out and hope for the best? Like no one ever asked that question. So he's honking the horn saying, stop, stop, stop. And obviously driving slower. So traffic is like formulating around us. We were on a pretty major road. The traffic is like melding around us because he's just honking the horn and going slow. So all the other drivers think there's an emergency on the school bus. And then the drivers around us start to realize there's a fight going on because all you see through the windows of the bus are just little kid arms flailing around people's faces getting smushed up against the glass just people beating each other like th that's all the drivers around us are seeing right so obviously everyone is very confused with the situation at hand not many people driving home from work expect to see a school bus full of white kids just beating each other so that's going down finally the bus driver just pulls over and starts just separating kids and and sending half outside and half staying on the bus and and calls the the school like the it's not the cops it's the school resource officers i don't know if you guys have those but in our school district we have like school cops like they're cops but they only work for the school district so their only job is to come here so they come down and basically uh everybody who was involved in the fight was banned from the bus we all got banned from the bus for a week actually until they got the security footage back because they didn't know who was fighting and who wasn't like so many kids were fighting that for a week they were just like we don't trust any of you to be responsible on the bus but, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty hectic. You know, 27 kids breaking out in Mortal Kombat finish her moves in the middle of, uh, the, the ride home is not something you expect to see every day. But regardless, 27 kids ended up getting banned from the bus, which is pretty impressive numbers, all right? Those aren't rookie numbers. Some people get into a fight on the bus and get banned for a week, but I think 27 people getting banned school district-wide from the bus is, is a pretty... That's a pretty epic savage number, all right? In terms of getting that many people involved in a fight, it's pretty impressive. Regardless, after that, my parents didn't let me ride the bus anymore because they, uh, you know, thought I was going to get jumped, which, to be fair, probably would have happened eventually. But, uh, yeah, that was the time that there was a bunch of fighting on the bus. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought, and as always, keep it 100. Today's notification shout-out goes to the one, the only, the handsome, some would say even really flattering, it's Abner67. Big shout-out to you for having on notifications, bro. If you want a notification shout-out, all you gotta do, send me a screenshot of your notifications onto my Instagram, at Scrubby, and I shout somebody out every day. But on that note, I'm gonna go on the bus right now and fight a homeless man. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow with another video. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? The human representation of a stick bug here. As I'm sure most of you guys know who watch the main channel, I I'm, a I'm a pretty skinny guy, okay? I'm not ripped by any means, alright? I definitely look like a piece of paper turned sideways. And so, as you can tell from the title, this story is probably not gonna make me look very cool, but YOLO, I gotta entertain you guys anyways. Uh, this is gonna be the story of some of my first fight, aka the time I got my absolute crap beat out of me. But before we get into the video, can you guys be sure to press that like button? If we get 2,000 likes on this video, I'll upload tomorrow. You guys know the drill, the 411, the Skapansky. Skapansky. I don't know what Skapansky is, but apparently it means you have to press the like button, so do that. And without further ado, let's get into me getting absolutely riggedy riggedy wrecked. So, I guess when I was a little kid, I would get into fights all the time, alright? Don't get me wrong, like, I, on the playground, you do what you gotta do. But this is my first real fight. The first time I actually got in a fight with somebody that knew what they were doing. Uh, so I, I was... I was a skater in my youth, you know. I, I rode the skateboards, did the did the kick flips, that type of thing. 
And so most days you could find me at the skate park. And as you guys can tell from the fact that I, my job is to tell stories and talk crap about people, I, I have a pretty big mouth. And this was especially true at the skate park because most people there I was friends with. And when you're friends with people, you just kind of give them a hard time, talk a little crap, that's what you got to do. And uh, I, I, I'm really good at talking crap. And I was friendly with basically everybody that would stay at the skate park most nights. I, I knew everyone, we had a friendly retort, they knew that I was just kind of memeing when I was talking crap, so it, it was never really personal. But one day I show up at the skate park right after school, and there's a guy there wearing dad shoes. And this is not now when dad shoes are cool again, I mean there's like Yeezy dad shoes, but <laughs> if you pay $500 for those, you're, you're kind of a tool. Sorry, Steve. And anyways, as I get there, there's a new guy wearing dad shoes there, and I don't recognize him, but I make a joke like, oh, nice shoes. And I, I guess this guy must have been having a really bad day, because he looks at me and goes, what did you just say, bitch? And I'm like, oh, nice shoes, you know, because like they're dad shoes. Ha ha. Like I'm laughing, right? And he goes, yeah, you want to make fun of my shoes some more, bro? And I was like, no, dude, it, it was just a joke. Like, chill out. And he's like, don't tell me to chill out. And he starts coming over and getting in my face. So at this point, I probably should have realized that this guy is having a bad day. He's not in the mood to be messed with, and I, I should have kept my mouth shut. But me being me, that's not a possibility, alright? Me keeping my mouth shut, never gonna happen. So as he's up in my face screaming at me, keep in mind this is before puberty really struck me, so I'm uh, sitting at a whole 5'3", probably about, I, I, I was kind of chubby, not gonna lie. I don't know how much I weighed, but I'm, I'm a pretty small kid, okay? And this guy is uh, definitely, definitely, definitely not your stereotypical skinny skater guy. He's got some muscle to him. I would say he was probably 16, 17 at this point. And I'm 13, 14. Pretty young, pretty young. So he gets up in my face and starts screaming at me about how, how dare I have the balls to come in here and start criticizing his shoes. And like, I was kidding. I did not mean to make this guy so angry, okay? Maybe he's stecking some dog poop or something. Maybe he was just having a bad day. Maybe he doesn't know how to tie his shoes and his mom had to tie him. Maybe that's why he was self-conscious. I'm not really sure. But this guy was really, really offended that I made fun of his shoes. So whatever, he's screaming at me, and for some reason while he's screaming at me, I have the bright idea in my head, and by bright idea, I mean really bad idea, to bring up how his breath smells. So as he's screaming at me, asking me how I dare I have the balls to make fun of his shoes, and how he's lucky that my shoe isn't up my ass right now, I just look at him and go, dang man, my bad, the only thing worse than your shoes is your breath. I don't know why I said it, I don't know what went through my mind, it was impulse, okay? I was on the spot and I had to make a funny. But as soon as those words left my mouth, I feel like all the humanity in his eyes just disappeared suddenly he wasn't even talking like he wasn't screaming anymore he just put down his skateboard and was like all right we're fighting and i was like what I, <laughs> what do you mean because you know most of the time when you get in a fight you kind of see it coming and like i said i was really calm I, I didn't mean anything like i wasn't mad at all so when he starts getting in the stance ready to fight i'm like uh I, I'm, I'm not i'm not quite sure what's gonna happen here so i try to back out of it i'm like look dude i don't want to fight like i'm just kidding around he's like no no no. like we're gonna fight and i'm like dude like I, i'm not gonna fight you and he goes if you don't put your skateboard down right now I'm gonna punch you in the face and I'm like dude just and as soon as I open my mouth to explain how he's not gonna fight me he just punches me in the side of the face and like I, I can take a punch pretty well okay that's where this story is going I can take a hit really 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 well it's just uh in this particular scenario I, I, I didn't I didn't hit back to be honest so I try to swing back, and I'm really discombobulated after his first punch. He, he hit me really, really hard, all right? I was seeing stars. So I think it, like, hits him, but not very hard, all right? He probably could have, you know, dental flossed his way out of it. And I don't know what's going on, but he hits me again, and I drop to the floor, right? I'm like, dang, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to get beat up here. But for some reason, and this is just how I am as a person, whenever I'm getting embarrassed or, like, beat up or anything, I, I just get back up. Like, I'm not the type of person to just get knocked out and, and not get back up. So I get back up, and the kid's like, really? And it hits me again, and I fall back down. So at this point, I've been punched in the face three times. I'm seeing stars, bro. I'm pretty sure I have at least 47 concussions. But for some reason, I get knocked down again, and I, I get back up, and I'm like, oh, dude, you hit like a bitch. Not the right choice. Clearly, he didn't. I don't know why I'm still talking at this point, because I'm getting obliterated. I'm the one on the ground twice now. It's not a good look. So he hits me again, and I go to the floor. Not surprisingly. But for some reason, I get back up, and at this point, the kid's like, what, what are you doing, dude? Like, stay down. So he punches me in the face again. And I go to the ground and he goes, stay down. Like, I don't want to hit you. Just stay down. But I get back up and he's like, dude, just like, stop. Like, it's not worth it. Even he's on my side now being like, just stop. You're, you're losing. Like, this is not worth what you're about to get hit with. But I get back up and he punches me again and I drop to the floor. And at this point, people in the skate park come over. They're breaking us up. And the guy's like, I mean, to be honest, you're annoying and all, but uh, kudos to you for getting back up so much. 
And I'm probably, I, I think, you know, I said something, but in reality, I, I don't know if my tongue was in the back of my throat. I don't know how much brain damage I had sustained at this point, but I doubt anything that I said made any tangible sense whatsoever. So whatever, I decide probably not good to be at the skate park anymore. So I, I go to ride home. I'm like having trouble balancing. I got obliterated, blitzed in front of all my friends. I got the absolute crap beat out of me. You know, it wasn't exactly the best performance for my boxing debut, but that's okay. Things happen, all right. I'm going to be hopping in the ring with Logan Paul in a few weeks now just to uh, practice. You know, I've gotten way better since then. Me and Master Splinter have been down in the sewer working on our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle skills. So uh, hit, be on the lookout because I'm basically a vigilante now. But on that note, guys, that's going to do it for the story. I got beat up in front of everybody, and it was really embarrassing. If you enjoyed, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video. The story times are really fun to make. I'm kind of reminiscing on my life and all the stupid stuff I did when I was a teenager. Uh, so if you guys want more, let me know. If you want a whole My First series, My First Girlfriend, all that stuff, I'll tell them. Just let me know in the comments, and I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day. I know I am. I do want to apologize for missing yesterday's upload. Uh, I got some bad news. I have a family member in the hospital. It just did not put me in the mood for recording, you know? Like usually I'm upbeat and energetic and when you get bad news, it's not like the first thing you want to do is scream about some dorky kid named Derek. We're not talking about anyone named Derek today, but if you are having a good day, I would appreciate you like pressing the like button. And uh, if you don't press the like button, then no joke, no scam, that nerdy kid named Derek will wake up in your pantry and come attack you. Honestly guys, as you can tell from the title and thumbnail today, I've got quite the story for you guys. We're going all the way back to elementary school for this one. I know that makes a lot of you even more concerned considering it's like school fight club as the title. But uh, you know, that's just life sometimes. So without further ado, let's step back into the mind of a young Ryan and uh, listen to fight club story time. So basically, when I was in second grade, we had this uh, teacher that didn't really vibe with us very well. I wouldn't say that she was like the worst teacher ever, but she also wasn't super fun. Uh, she had the personality of like mayonnaise. So she was just a stickler for the rules and like she wasn't a horrible teacher. She wasn't mean, she just, you know, had the personality of a white woman in her mid-30s with a short haircut, you know? And at the time, being a young kid, one of my favorite things to do was to goof off with my friends. And uh, me and my friends decided one day at lunch that we were going to bring our Beyblades to school and play with them. The only thing is that, like, Beyblades at the time were banned from our school because there had been too many fights on the playground over Beyblade battles. My school was apparently going too hard. I don't know if we thought, like, the Beyblade TV show was real and we actually had stuff on the line. But kids really were fist fighting over Beyblade battles. But me and my friends decided, YOLO, we can just go into the bathroom at lunch and pay Beyblades and it's gonna be a, a great time. I didn't exactly have any, like, super swag in Beyblades, you know? My parents weren't exactly shelling out the cash to get, yeah, the, the swaggest Beyblades around. But I was pretty alright at it and also there's really not much skill involved in Beyblade battling. It's like, which one of your tops, you know, just spins for longer? Like, the really isn't much you can control about it to keep it a buck with you, especially when you're an idiot in second grade. Uh, no insults to any second graders watching this, hopefully not, you know, this content is not made for children. Susan, if you're watching this, I have no idea how these kids got here, uh, please don't demonetize me. Regardless though, we decided that we were gonna do Beyblade battles, so we bring our Beyblades to school the next day and we're in the bathroom and we're just having a great time Beyblade battling. Somebody had brought, like, this little stadium thing in their backpack and we're having ourselves a great time. And for maybe 20 minutes, we're like the only people in the bathroom and then some other kids come in and they're like, oh my gosh, you guys brought Beyblades? Can we come tomorrow and play? And we're like, yeah, sure, we're having fun playing Beyblades. Who cares? It's a good time. Everybody can come to the Beyblade party. So we knew that Beyblades were banned in our school and whenever we wanted to talk about our little club that we had going that would pay Beyblades, we needed a nickname for it. So these new kids were joining. Our group was going from like, you know, six people to like 10 people. And uh, we decided it was about time that we got an official nickname. And being in second grade, we thought that the nickname Fight Club was better than Beyblade Club because we knew fighting was against the rules, but we definitely knew they were going to take our Beyblades if they find out. So we just decided to call it Fight Club because I don't know. I, I really don't know. We just thought it was going to get us in less trouble than Beyblade Club, which is a really weird thing to think in retrospect. And this is why second graders are not presidents because they are dumb. So we get back to class and obviously rumors start spreading pretty quickly about our, uh, our Fight Club. <laughs> 
our fight club. So the next day we go to lunch and somebody brings out the little thing and we walk into the bathroom and there's like 15 other kids in there now. This is a very crammed bathroom and everybody's asking to be a part of our Beyblade fight club and yada 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 and we're like, okay, okay, listen, there's obviously way too many people for everyone to play on just one stadium, okay? So if anybody else can bring a stadium, that will work. Then we can all have our Beyblade fights. But until then, we're gonna have to pick and choose like who gets to play. And at our elementary school at the time they had this program called student bucks and whenever you were a good kid you would get it and you could use it to buy snacks and stuff at the uh, like concession stand at our school during lunch it was called the snack shack and so as the founding members of the Beyblade squad we decided that the new kids could could purchase a, a spot at our uh, stadium you know and we started to make some bazooka money off the uh, fight club we we really did like kids would bring so much student money that uh, I just stopped bringing lunch because I was buying so much stuff from the snack shack and for maybe like a week or two second grade me is the richest kid in school uh, I've always been like I, I like to, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. I've always been uh, Somebody who likes to hustle, but I didn't even have to hustle I was getting paid for doing something. I love all I had to do was show up at lunch in the Beyblade room Assign kids to certain stadiums get my pay cut and leave. It was simple I was just the most organized one So I would be in charge of assigning people to stadiums and taking the money if you brought a stadium to school You got a cut of the money and then we also started gambling We didn't really know at the time it was gambling It was just this idea that one of us had where we were like, oh my gosh, what if we bet on the Beyblade battles and then the winner got the money? And all of us were like, oh, that's so smart. And this isn't real money, by the way. This is like those student bucks, you know? Like, they're, they're not real. You can't actually go buy anything with them. But I was, uh, you know, pulling a taiga at Rack City, throwing money at everybody. I was making bank. Like, I was had so many student bucks. Like I said, I was buying lunch every day. I was buying people food. And uh, the attendant at the snack shack eventually is kind of like, where the hell is this kid getting all this student money from? Because you had to get it from teachers. So she originally thought that, uh, you know, I had... I had just stolen money from a teacher and was like taking it all so one day she asked me she's like well how are you paying for all this and I decided in my infinite second grade wisdom to respond with fight club fight club is what I said and she goes what do you mean you guys have a fight club what do you mean and I was like uh I don't know and took my snack and ran away so obviously this concerned like snack shack attendant is like, um, is there a fight club going on that is paying kids to beat the crap out of each other that they are then using the money to come buy hot Cheetos from me with? So obviously she does the responsible adult thing and decides to tell the principal. The principal, uh, figures out who I am, you know, and, and comes and finds me in class and pulls me out, takes me to the office and is basically like, I need all the names of everyone involved in Fight Club. And even in second grade, I wasn't no snitch, so I basically tell him, I'm sorry, I'm the only one in it, I, I can't tell you. And he's like, look, I know that there's been a lot of kids in the bathroom. You tell me what's going on in there, or I'm gonna call your parents. And the only thing at the time that could make me snitch was a call to my parents, okay? It's the equivalent of like a lifetime prison sentence. I love my bros. If they straight up did the crime and I'm about to go to jail for the rest of my life for it, I'm sorry. I might have to do what I have to do. So, in order to avoid uh, telling my parents, I tell them everybody that was involved. And for whatever reason, I think I was so terrified of my parents getting called. I don't clarify that we're just playing with Beyblade. So, this principal legitimately thinks that he has a bunch of 8-year-olds running a fight club in the bathroom. So, within like 15 minutes, me and every kid who has been at these Beyblade fights for the last little bit are in this like conference room. And sure Sure enough, this liar, liar, says we're calling all of your parents. Excuse me? You're telling me I snitched for nothing? I snitched explicitly to avoid my mom finding out about Fight Club, okay? But sure enough, about 30 minutes later, a bunch of very angry, confused parents walk in being like, why did we get called down to the school? What has our sons done? And uh, we're all sitting there looking disappointed and the principal starts talking about how we've been running a fight club and this is very serious. There's like potential legal ramifications and all of us are keeping our mouth shut because when he starts talking about how much trouble we're gonna get in, we don't wanna say anything. Keep in mind, we still think this is about a Beyblade club. We didn't understand like the context of how bad Fight Club was comparatively. We just knew that toys were banned. We didn't know that Fight Clubs were banned. So they start like pressing us for details and I'm not saying a word, man. I've realized that my principal is a liar. He promised not to call my mom and sure enough, my mom is sitting here looking pissed as hell at looking at me as an explanation as to why 
why I started a little kid fight club, and I have no explanation at all, because it's not even a real fight club. So, they're, like, yelling at us, and we're all crying, like, every kid is, you know, in tears, because we're saying that we're gonna potentially get legal ramifications for the fact that we, you know, we're paying blade blades in the bathroom. And finally, one of us, in tears, is like, I didn't realize that Beyblades was such a bad thing. And the principal is like, what, what do you mean, you know? And he says, we were just playing with Beyblades, I'm sorry. And the principal's like, what are Beyblades? And the parents are kind of like, oh, it's these things that they fight with. And the principal looks at us, and he's like, are you guys actually fighting, or are you just doing these Beyblade fights in the bathroom? And we're all like, it's the Beyblades! Everybody's just sobbing now, because we think we're about to go to prison for finally getting busted for our Beyblade fighting ring. Anyways, uh, we're, we're in the middle of this now, and the principal's like, it's Beyblades, you know? And he's getting Beyblades explained to him how they're like little metal tops that spin. He's like, well, you, do you guys have them? And we're like, yeah, and our backpack's in class. So he sends us back to class, and he tells us to bring them to, like, the office. So we come back, and our parents have, like, these smiles on their faces now, and the principal is smiling, too. He's like, now, boys, playing with Beyblades at school is bad because it distracts you from your schoolwork. So we're going to confiscate these, okay? And I don't want to hear anything else about this fight club, okay? You don't mention anything about this. And we're all like, oh my god, I don't know what's happening, but the stars have aligned, you know? And, uh, I was a little upset to get rid of my Beyblade and give it to him, because, like, low-key, it was my favorite Beyblade. And you know what the worst part is? I never got it back. He promised us all that we were gonna get our Beyblades back at the end of the year. That was a terrible, that's a tongue twister. Beyblades back? I can't say that. And honestly, it wasn't even till like, 8th grade that I realized what actually happened here when I watched the movie Fight Club, and I realized that the adults definitely thought we were just, like, beating the crap out of each other with plastic lightsabers in the bathroom at our elementary school. But, uh, you know, Mr. Federer, if you're watching this, you're a jerk for stealing my Beyblade, and I would like it back. Please mail it to me, okay? I know you watch Scrubby videos, you're a ginormous fan. Real talk, he's probably dead now. He was, like, 70 back then, and it's been 20 years. Who knows? Who knows? But, uh, yeah, that's the story about my school fight club. I know this was a shorter one. I've been on a long streak. Uh, I'm still not, like, in the greatest move ever, uh, mood ever, you know? But, uh, hopefully you guys found this entertaining. If you did, I'd really appreciate you pressing the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. Use code SCRUBBY in the G Fuel checkout store. Scope out the merch, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram. Today's notification shout-out goes to the very swagtastic and occasionally pregnant... <gasps> But not really. Uh, it's Maddie. I, I hope you're not pregnant, but if you are, I hope the dude was hot, you know? You, you gotta follow the rules. And, uh, yeah, on that note, guys, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. I appreciate all the support recently, and remember, it's not a fight club if it's Beyblades. Uh, it, Brett definitely would have been a nice lesson to learn back then. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely incredible day I know I am if you are I need you guys to press that like button Otherwise no joke no scam a pack of wild hyenas is actually going to kick in your door on Thanksgiving and eat your turkey Yeah, that's right guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I know Thanksgiving is a time-honored American tradition But if you don't press the like button a pack of wild hyenas is going to destroy your beautiful Thanksgiving dinner So uh press like otherwise. Yeah, yeah yeah, you know, Thanksgiving is never gonna be the same for anyone. Anyways, guys, today we're gonna be talking about the tried and true cringe of the internet, which is weeaboos, alright? If you wanna watch anime, sit down, relax, spoke couple, I don't, I don't know what you anime kids do, whatever you do, and watch some anime, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you start to become a weeaboo, uh, it's pretty cringe, bro, I can't lie. Basically, a weeaboo is somebody that thinks they're Japanese just because they like anime, which is the equivalent of thinking you're American because you've watched, like, two James Bond movies, and James Bond is British, that doesn't even make sense. My school had a pretty large populations of weeaboo, though. I just had a lot of weird kids that went to my school. I don't know what it is, but it was like, you know, the upside down. But, uh, instead of Demogorgons, I just had weeaboos, goth kids, and, uh, kids who thought they were werewolves, you know? The traditional split. Everybody had those weird kids. And, uh, this story is gonna be no exception. It comes from prom, which is, you know, the greatest night of high school. Everyone knows that prom is art. Uh, reality of the situation is that prom is really not that dope. But regardless, it's a funny story that I think you guys are gonna enjoy about a weeaboo at prom. So with, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So, you know, prom is supposed to be a magical time in American high school. It's basically this dance you can only go to 
if you're a junior or a senior, and it's supposed to be the last hurrah of high school, you know, double dab party with the haters, and what it's really turned into is a bunch of people wearing really expensive clothes and uh, just having drama all night, you know? But you know what? Thankfully, I was usually able to stay out of drama while being able to enjoy it from afar. I would get my binoculars out and be like, oh my gosh, the wild cheerleader takes a strike at the wild golf girl. Here we have a massive amount of drama unfolding in the middle of prom. You know, that, that, that was my thing. And uh, me and my friends decided to go to prom and just have a good time. And the second we walked into the dance, you could basically tell, like, who the cliques were, okay? Because in one corner of the room, you had all the normal kids. And in one corner of the room, you had all the popular kids. And in one corner of the room, you had all the emo kids, like the werewolf kids, all the kids that, you know, parents really didn't give them too much attention. And then in the other corner of the room, you had all the weeaboos. And uh, I'm not even kidding, one of the weeaboo kids had brought a body pillow as his date to prom, you know, just really setting the tone for how how much of an absolute winner, a champion he is. Everybody knows that if you bring a body pillow, weeaboo, uh, anime girl to prom, no one's gonna make fun of you, nobody's gonna bully you, it's just the 311, no one's gonna think you're weird at all. Um, that's a joke. If you bring a pillow to prom, people are 100% going to make fun of you because you brought a pillow, a pillow to prom. So as you can tell, we're basically sitting front row at a freak show, alright? I have a man making out with a pillow on a dance floor, I've got people thinking they're werewolves, I have cheerleaders that are probably 18 months pregnant somehow I don't know whatever supplements they were taking really made their pregnancy whack and in the middle of it is me and my friends just watching this all go down all right so uh as the dance goes on and everybody starts making their way onto the dance floor we're kind of keeping an eye from afar making sure nothing goes down being vigilant almost like Batman you know huh I'm not trying to say that I'm ripped and gorgeous like George Clooney but uh, um I'm ripped in Georgia just like Gord Clooney, baby. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Um, anyways, as the dance floor starts to kind of mingle and interact, the group start to sort of bump into each other. And it's still very obvious, like, almost like the dance floor had each corner dedicated to a certain group of people, you know? Like, they didn't mix very much. There's no cheerleaders dancing with goth kids. But, uh, that's basically what we're looking at. And in the corner, in like the middle of it all, is where the all groups kind of merged together and kind of met, except they were not interacting whatsoever. Like, it's basically, imagine, you know, a magic force field dividing this dance floor into four corners. That's what we've got going on. And uh, as time goes on, the weeaboos, for some reason, are getting kind of brave, you know? They're kind of breaking into enemy territory, all right? They're crossing the line. I see one of them get a shield and a hammer and start charging towards the popular kids. Uh, in reality, you know, they just slowly started, you know, merging merging together and the popular kids are very obviously upset by this because how dare the weeaboo peasants step foot on the pedestal of the great popular kids um that's not my opinion i was just watching this go down i thought it was funny but whatever there's these two weeaboo kids dancing and uh, i'm not even kidding when i say that they went hard in the paint like they were basically in full cosplay gear at prom and you know what if you want to do that and believe in yourself and think it's dope then by all means go for it i'm not gonna make fun of you yeah it's a little weird and i might like make a joke or two but at the end of the day if you're confident enough to wear a weeaboo cosplay to prom, by all means, go for it, man. I don't care whatsoever. But it's this guy and his girlfriend, and they're wearing matching cosplays, which... You know, not my cup of tea, but hey, couples goals in one way or another. You know, if your uh, if if your body pillow can is so stiff it can stand up straight, and you'll get a girlfriend, more power to you. You know, ten out of ten would recommend. But whatever, they're kind of dancing with the popular kids now, and the popular kids are basically acting like somebody slapped them in the face with a piece of baloney. Uh, baloney's a weird thing to get slapped by. Something about the consistency of it. It's like a sponge. It smacks your face, sucks it in, kind of gives it a little bit of a hug. Uh, I've been slapped by baloney more times than I would care to admit. But uh, obviously, the popular kids are very offended that the weeaboos have entroached on their dance floor space. And uh, I see a cheerleader that looks kind of like um, the definition of a stereotypical bitch from a high school movie, okay? That's the only way to explain it. And she accidentally, and I use accidentally in air quotes because I watched it happen, she totally did it on purpose, pours punch on this poor weeaboo girl's cosplay dress. Like, listen, you know what? I understand maybe you don't like weeaboos. Maybe they're not your favorite type of people in the world, but they're just having fun dancing, dude. Like, you really didn't need to go dump punch on this girl's dress, and it's obviously that it means a lot to her. Her and her boyfriend have matching cosplay. Like, 
I, I don't know. I, I'm all for, you know, being being mean and making fun of people when they deserve it. Don't get me wrong. I'm never going to go swinging on people who I don't feel like deserve it a little bit. But, like, if someone's just being innocent, minding their own business at the bus stop, I'm not going to walk up to them and tell them they're fat and they have an ugly haircut. That's just mean. So, obviously, this cheerleader just, just did this to be rude and mean and make this poor girl feel bad. However, her boyfriend, who was um, wearing a Naruto headband, this is important because it makes the story this much funnier, proceeds to turn around and basically challenge this girl to fight. And her boyfriend walks over and is like, whoa, bro, you got a problem? Like, it was an accident. Chill out, man. And Naruto headband, man, is having none of it. And he starts screaming about how for the past four years, the popular kids have treated everyone in this school like garbage, and it's time someone stood up to them and takes a combat stance. Some hami hami ha Naruto combat stance out here on the dance floor. It went from a dance floor to a battle arena. Fortnite Battle Royale Prom Edition is about to break down, and I, my friends, am sitting on a front row seat, popcorn at the ready like Keemstar watching a drama alert. So here I am looking at this, and the popular kid is like, whatever, bro, and just like gets ready to fight, and the weeaboo out of nowhere, out of nowhere, does like some sick Bruce Lee Kung Jitsu Fitsu Karate Hami Hami Ha stuff, and just punches this guy in the face, and the guy like falls over, and all of his friends are gathering around now, so all of Naruto's friend guys, buddy, start gathering around him and here we have it dude it's like all the jocks all the football players versus these weeaboos who have very clearly taken their karate lessons very seriously you know the karate dojo down by target has basically become a breeding ground for absolute monsters of weeaboos that are going to do nothing but destroy every soul that gets in their way and spills punch on their girlfriends okay like i'm terrified for one now we have a weeaboo army in school that is single-handedly going to destroy every single person that has ever existed so these two gangs are basically standing they're looking at each other and then it happens they start fighting i'm talking old school gang fight out of a 50s movie the greasers versus the whatever gangs they're everyone's fighting p thrunches are being pwned naruto headbands are flying off at one point i saw a shoe get thrown i don't even know what's going on it's wwe mode but me and my friends are sitting here slack jawed watching the absolute combat spectacle that is going down the football players are punching the weeaboos weeaboos are punching football players and shockingly the weeaboos are holding their own extremely well like most of them were definitely not in the best shape Okay, like roly poly olies are out here on the dance floor fighting each other and uh, somehow their karate lessons are holding strong They're fighting each other football players are getting punched weeboos are getting punched Then all the girls are just kind of like oh my god stop 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 and in reality We all know the girls are like keep fighting, please. I'm enjoying the entertainment, please This prom was getting boring, but whatever they're fighting and the Dean start trying to come out and break it up Except there's so many kids fighting that like there's not enough chaperones There's not enough teachers to break it up So the fight just kind of moves like as the Dean's come in and grab two or three kids on the left Left, the people just move to the right and keep fighting each other so for about five minutes They're just going at it swinging on each other Everyone's getting knocked out well not knocked out people are getting punched in the face. It's insane So after five minutes the fight finally calms down and uh, they decided to just like end the dance there Okay, there was only about an hour left But after uh, you know 17 kids are having a fisticuffs in the middle of a dance floor They decide to end it and so we go home and me and my friends are just laughing talking about it And one of them goes oh my god It's going on Twitter and we're like what so we pull it up and up sure Sure enough, all the weeaboos and the football players are now arguing back and forth on Twitter about how, you know, they're idiots and, like, we should do a rematch, blah, 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 and they're setting up a rematch, meaning that the fisticuffs that went down at the park was not enough. No, 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 no. Now, now, they're gonna go fight in the park in an hour, and the park's right by my house. So me and my friends change out of our fancy clothes, we get in, like, sweatpants and, and hoodies, and we just start beelining as fast as we can for the park. Because I'm not missing the Shaolin Showdown Part 2, okay? Like, sure, I already watched them fight a little bit. It wasn't enough. I need more combat. I, 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 I blood sports, okay? So sure enough, we get there, and, uh, yeah, the weeaboos are standing there on one side. The jocks are on the other. They're ready to go back at it round two. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, oh my god, this all started because weeaboo Naruto boy wanted to defend his girlfriend. And that actually might be the coolest part of all of this. Like, after years and years of getting bullied by the jocks they were like yeah no that we've had enough we're, we're 1v1 ing no scopes only picking on my girlfriend was the last straw and so uh, we're sitting here and and they just start fighting they start going at it it goes on for about 10 minutes before both sides peter out and sure enough the weeaboos won i did not see it coming i don't think anybody saw it coming but uh as the smoke clears and the dust settles the weeaboos won the battle his lady's honor had been restored and uh you know it, it was by far the funniest fight I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of weird fights, but until you've seen Naruto cosplayers fighting jocks, 
You haven't lived. On that note, though, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to press the like button, comment down below, and subscribe. and make videos like this every single day, and I would love to see you guys here on another video. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. I'm out. Peace. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an incredible day. I know I am. If you are, I need you to smash that like button because the likes are down, okay? I haven't gotten 10,000 likes on a video in a while, and it's making me depressed. So depressed that I called Susan down herself to kick me in the shins with high heels unless this video gets 10,000 likes. I know I'm desperate. Yes, I know I'm begging. No, I don't feel bad. Press the like button. Otherwise, I will actually be kicked in the shin by Susan herself, and she's wearing high heels. You guys don't want me to get kicked by Susan wearing high heels, okay? That is a pain. I would not wish upon my worst enemy. Today we're gonna be talking about the cringiest kid that I had in my class. I have a lot of cringy kid stories, okay? I have this person, I have a girl who swore that she was the, the next big Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, teen social media star that I'm probably gonna talk about tomorrow. We're bringing it back, baby! We're going to my roots, we're gonna talk about some old-fashioned cringe. But today we're gonna be talking about an emo kid. There was a lot of emo kids at my school, I don't know why it was. Like, my school had a really good theater program and we had, like, a magnet program for it. So a lot of kids at our school were there for theater. And I don't know what it is about theater kids, but for some reason, they just have a very high emo population. It's probably the fact they have to listen to other theater kids sing so much that makes them want to hate their life. But, you know, regardless, for some reason at my school, there was a massive amount of emos. And, uh, I don't know. I don't really hate my life. Like, I'm not an emo kid by any means. I went through a bad, bad emo phase in middle school. But I think by the time you're 17, 18 years old, you'd probably grow out of the no, uh, I hate my life when you're from an upper middle class neighborhood. Like, it's just kind of cringy to be like, uh, life's so hard. My dad bought me a new toy. Toyota instead of a Mercedes, uh. But regardless, there were plenty of those kids in my school who would just find a way to hate their life. I don't know. It, it was an emo cringe squad. They actually did not get along with the werewolf crew. I made another story time a while ago about kids. There was like this werewolf group at my school that was super weird. But regardless, you know, there was a lot, a lot of emo kids and they had their very own clique and they were like a little gang almost, except instead of, you know, being intimidating and being able to like fight and run the yard like a real gang, they would just complain a lot and sing My Chemical Romance lyrics at the top of their lungs in the hallway and god like why why do people sing in the hallway if they can't sing if you are tone deaf and sound like i don't know helen keller trying to sing the alphabet just don't open your mouth you don't have to sing no one's going to be impressed with you you're not good at singing and that's okay not everyone is good at singing at the end of the day so shut up just go to class. You don't need to sing in the hallway. But for some reason, emo kids would always, like, sing in the hallway. I'm getting off topic here. I'm gonna get back on now. That's important. But, uh, if you can't sing, don't sing. It's really simple. But regardless, this gang of emo theater kids would hang out in the in the front of the lunchroom, like, in this little courtyard thing we had in our school. And, uh, they had a leader. And this was the type of kid, like, he literally looked like the dude in the thumbnail, all right? He would wear eyeshadow to school every day and, like, these weird designs. He had contacts that made his eyes white. The ultimate cringy edge lord. Like, if someone was like, ah, oh, write down what you think the meaning of life is in English class, you'd be like, life is meaningless. It's just an illusion of happiness. Uh, my mom hates me. They, my dad and my stepdad get along. Life's so hard and everybody knows. Like, listen, life is hard. I'm not trying to say that you can't go through hard times, but something about being like, I'm just gonna color shapes on my eyelashes with eyeliner and then talk about how hard my life is all the time. It's just cringy. Like, look, everybody goes through hard times. Everybody goes through stuff, but uh, it's not an excuse to use it to get attention because you don't get enough of it at home, okay? Like, cool your jets there, Benny Hanna. Y you're just like the rest of us. But regardless, the, the leader of this little emo gang would wear eyeliner and cool designs and, and he had white contacts and he would talk about how meaningless life is it's all an empty void deprived of all love and sensation except for the few lucky ones that managed to work as a cog in the machine and i'm not gonna be a cog dude it, it was literally like he watched a, a weird fan fiction version of the matrix and just started quoting it like uh yeah neo take the blue pill it's all not real it's all fake it's not real reality and he was like damn bro that's so deep i'm gonna start talking about people are cogs and machines and i'm just gonna look so deep so obviously mr deep guy was just a cringe lord and i I don't have a problem keeping my mouth. Like, I, I do have a problem keeping my mouth shut. I don't have a problem calling people out when they're being cringy. I don't know why. It's just like, I, I can't. I can't deal with it. If I don't point it out, it blows my mind. Or I have to laugh at it. It's one of the two. Like, I can't take it seriously or I have to call it out. Like, if you really sit there, oh, life's so hard. I'm going to giggle. I'm, I can't take you seriously unless 
your life's hard. Like, listen, if your life's hard and you're going through a hard time and you're like, wow, you know, I'm just going through a lot. By all means, I get it. I get it. Life can be really, really hard sometimes and that's okay. But when you color on your face to make it look like, I don't know, a four-year-old gently trying to color in the sun, like outside the lines and stuff and just complain about everything in your life sucking. Yeah, I I'm gonna make fun of you. I'm sorry. I don't feel bad. And me and this guy really already did not get along because it's like I said, he had a whole little crew of emo kids that were underneath him. Like he was the emo overlord. All right. Like when they went to Hot Topic, he got all the coupons that was the deal that probably was their deal to be honest with you it was something stupid like that regardless he was kind of the leader of this emo gang and i had already gotten into like a little bit of a scuffle not a fight but just kind of like yelled at one of his friends and, and got his friend in trouble once in art class so me and this guy did not get along me and the whole emo kids did not get along because i just i don't know they, they just made me cringe a lot and we got into beef okay that's all there was to it me and this guy already did not get along and like i said in our english class he would write poems about how hard life is when it wasn't the assignment and then would read it in front of the class. And I'm sorry, that's just cringy. I can't take you seriously. Like if your assignment is to write an essay about Frankenstein and then you get up and share a haiku about how hard life is because Dan, your stepdad, watches too many NFL games with your mom so you and her can't write poetry together. That's not the assignment, bro. Cool your jets. Like, I, I don't know. It, it was just weird. So one day, homeboy is reading some poetry in front of the English class and he says something along the lines of like, no one will ever understand my pain and then rhymed it with rain and I just started laughing. And the entire entire classroom just turns and gives me like this dirty look and i'm sorry but this dude has has hieroglyphics on his forehead in eyeliner and is rhyming pain with rain while standing in front of a class in high school when the assignment was to write our thoughts and feelings about Jurassic Park, which is what we were reading. I can't take you seriously, bro. So he says to me, he's like, oh, do we have a problem here? And I'm like, no, dude, it's just kind of corny. And he's like, what's corny about my emotions? And I said, the fact that you're telling them to people you don't know. Like, you don't need to overshare with me, dude. I, I do not know you like that. Like, you don't need to tell me that you're crying every night because you miss your mom and dad or like what? I don't I don't even know. I don't think his parents even were divorced, to be fair. Like, it was... Basically, he was whining about the fact that his mom and dad didn't understand him. I was just using the stupid Dan watching NFL joke, okay? But, like, I don't know you like that. You don't need to tell me that your mom and dad don't understand you and you cry every night from the rain and the pain while you're feeling so insane. It's insufferable. Like, n no one cares, dude. I don't know you. You don't, you don't need to share this with me. But regardless, I kind of pointed out that it's weird that the assignment was to write our feelings about Jurassic Park and he had the need to get up and read poetry about mommy and daddy not... Not liking him or whatever I don't even know and I, I obviously he did not like this very much and he's like it's an expression of my inner emotions and I was like dude no one cares about your inner emotions you don't know us we don't know you no one is sitting here going I wonder what hieroglyphic on his forehead boy is thinking about his home life situation like bruh if you got problems go to a counselor they have counselors at school for a reason me sitting here trying to read Jurassic Park I'm not your therapist like if you got issues go talk to somebody else and so obviously me telling this kid to go get a therapist because his English class does not care about his problems makes him pretty pissed off because he's been reading poetry all year and I've just been silently judging and giggling at it the entire time. So he gets all pressed and starts asking me if I have a problem like do I really want to take it outside or whatever and I'm just laughing like I'm laughing while I'm telling him all this because imagine some emo kid that you just said his poetry sucks and you don't care being like Ugh, you got a problem bro? So whatever my English teacher gets up and says that I'm being extremely rude to him for he's just trying to share his feelings and, and listen I need to clarify this because I feel like people are going to think I'm a jerk. If your feelings are hurt and, and you need somebody to vent to, that's cool. Don't do it in front of your entire English class when the assignment is to write about dinosaurs, okay? Like, imagine you're just sitting in class ready to write about dinosaurs and a book about dinosaurs in an amusement park. And then homeboy starts pulling up, rapping, and crying about, oh, my, my life's so hard. Like, it's just not the time and the place. There's a time and the place to talk about your feelings, and in front of a bunch of strangers who don't care is, is not the time or the place. It's just not cool. Like, you're just weird. Like I said, go talk to your friends. I know you have a whole crew of emo kids that would listen to your problems. That's not me. But whatever, I guess I was the rude one. She tells me to go out in the hallway while he finishes his poem, and I'm like, gladly, dude, anything to get away from this bar fest. So I go out in the hallway and whatever, and I come back in, and she's like, you need to apologize. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna apologize. I don't feel bad. I would apologize if I felt bad, if I really felt like I did something wrong, but me just telling the kid to do the assignment, shut up, write about dinosaurs, and not write about his problems is nothing I'm, I'm not going to apologize. And she's like, Ryan... You need to apologize. I'm like, I'm not going to apologize. That, that, I'm sorry. It's not personal, except it is. I don't care about your problems and your constant whining about them. I'm not going to apologize to you because I have nothing to be sorry for. And he says, it's fine. Simpletons don't understand the deep art of poetry. Which I mean, you know what? Fine. Maybe I was a bit of a jerk for whining about this kid's poetry. But if you're going to call me stupid for not understanding your poetry, 
I, I know you're not talking to me. We're just gonna pretend that you didn't rhyme pain with rain, like the most basic white boy Tumblr poetry of all time. Oh, you think I didn't notice that? You thought you were really slick, huh? That's right, everybody. He rhymed pain with rain and had the balls to say that I was too simple-minded to understand it. So that pisses me off because if you're gonna call me stupid, at least point out something stupid I've done. I've done a lot of stupid things. There's plenty of things to call me stupid for, but saying your poetry is so complex I can't understand it when you ride pain with rain is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And I let him know what I think by just telling him, dude, I'm not stupid. Your poetry just sucks balls. Where's my exact words? Which of course does not go over well uh, because I had one of these English teachers that was convinced that everybody deserves stories and everybody deserves to have their voice heard. Truth of the matter is, if you suck at poetry, don't write poetry. And if you rhyme pain with rain to tell me about your problems, your poetry blows and I have no, no reason to want to listen to it at all. But I guess I pushed Cringe Lord's button a little bit too hard because that's it. And he goes, honestly, man, you really just don't know who you're messing with, bro. And I'm like, oh yeah, right. Vampiric touch, hot topic poster looking ass. I am not afraid of you. And he's like, whatever, I guess we'll settle this at lunch. And I'm like, then I guess we will settle this at lunch. You freak. And before anyone's like, oh, he's so mean. You're, he's so mean. You're a big bully. Yeah, I make fun of people. You're right. If you're cringy and I call you out and then you have the balls to call me stupid for not understanding your garbage poetry, I'm going to be mean. I'm not going to be nice to you. He was mean too. Shut up. You can see the comment now. Maybe you're just a bully. Maybe you should shut up. You, you ever thought about that? And for everybody who's not commenting, I'm a bully and agrees with me that it's not my job to listen to crappy poetry. Thank you for having a brain. But regardless, you know, he's saying that uh, we, we're going to settle this at lunch. So I'm like, all right, I guess we're going to settle this at lunch. And I totally forget about it because that's like second period. And I had lunch after fourth period. So to be honest with you, I was not expecting to walk into lunch and see some emo kids ready to fight me. I was just not ready for it. I go to lunch, I do my thing, I'm eating lunch with my friends, and I feel this darkness behind me, like this dark voodoo energy, and I turn around, and sure enough, emo boy and his whole gang is sitting there, and they're just kind of chilling, and he's looking at me, and he goes, are you ready to settle this? I'm like, what, what are we settling, bro? And he's like, you disrespected my poetry, so I challenge you to combat. This emo kid said, challenge you to combat, like I'm an 18th century senator trying to 1v1 flintlock pistol only in an ultimate battle to the death. Yeah, I challenge you to combat, Bro, get your Mortal Kombat 3 looking nose out of here, dude. You look like a Matrix backup character. And whatever, I'm just not in the mood to deal with this right now. Like, I'm, I'm really just not. I'm like, dude, I don't want to fight you. And he's like, oh, what? You're going to talk about my poetry and then not fight me? And I was like, yeah, I mean, kind of. It's That's the plan. And he goes, get up. And he, like, takes my chair and dumps me out of it. Like, picks up the back and, like, pushes it. He doesn't, like, pick up the chair, but you know what I mean? Like, when you push the chair up and the person kind of slides out of it. And at this point, I'm getting pissed. And I'm like, dude, can you just knock it off, please? And I am by no means a fighter. I don't consider myself a fighter. I, I I have not won many fights by any means. I've been in a few, have not won many. I think I probably got a 50% win-loss rate when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat situations, okay? I'm definitely not a Fortnite player out here beating people to death with a pickaxe. But I know for a fact that I can beat this kid up because he's the only person in the world who is skinnier than me and also writes poetry. And I know I can beat up a dude who writes poetry that rhymes rain with pain. I know that for a fact. So I turn around and I'm like, if you want to do this, we can do this. And he goes, I want nothing more and like drops into a combat stance like you know when they do the squat like arm above the head at a 90 degree angle looking like you watched a Bruce Lee movie and went oh so that's how you fight like that is what this dude looks like and so I'm laughing again and he goes to try to kick me in the face he goes for just a kick in the face that was his opening move, all right? Like, he was playing chess, and his opening move was kick to the forehead, 99 points of damage. This is not a Pokemon battle. And of course, he is by no means athletic. He has not had any, like, martial arts training. So I just step back, and his foot misses my face. And I give him this weird look, like, did you just try to kick me in the face? I didn't say it, but this, the look of, like, really? Really, dude? Really? And he gets back in the combat stance and says, let it begin. Like, I don't know where this dude got his fight interaction from, but he was no joke acting like we were a final boss in a video game. 1v1 here and it just made me even angrier i was like this dude looks like a gremlin and he's just jumping around like rah, rah, combat rah, 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 boss fight rah. so whatever he's in this combat stance walking in circles around me like like they do in a kung fu movie i'm telling you that's the only fight experience this kid has had is watching people fight in kung fu movies and he does the thing with his hand like the come here movement like where you take your hand and you put your palm up and you go like ho ho come here combat me please ho ho 
And I'm like, dude, this is this is whatever. So whatever. He gets up and starts charging at me. And like I said, he's doing all this fancy combat stuff. He's doing like the come here movement. And he gets close to me and I just punch him in the face like as hard as I can. And I hit him square in the nose and his nose starts to bleed. And I didn't even mean to hit him. Like, like okay, I did. Obviously, when I went to punch him, my goal was to hit him. But I swear the kid acted like I like unlocked my secret double extra YY combat move to just extra, extra punch him just in the face. Because he like pulls back and goes, huh? a worthy opponent and i'm like dude this is not an anime we are fighting shut up stop talking go write a poem about how i just punched you in the nose and now it's bleeding and whatever so he's like a worthy opponent like i like we're the next hokage or something i don't know what's going on i'm as confused as you are but anyways this dude is like swearing that this is finally a worthy opponent haha -ha, someone to master my combat skills with so he comes back around like a ninja and i just punch him in the face again and at this point my dean is like trying to pull us apart and i'm just seeing red i'm pissed so i'm just swinging at him i'm kicking like i'm I'm doing everything I can to try to just beat this kid. And he's like, ah, a worthy opponent. Like, he's still talking in some anime voices. I don't know what his game plan was, but he just sounds stupid. So I'm pissed off. They finally get us apart, and he's like, well, I guess we have this settled. I was like, you lost. You lost. He's like, well, ha, huh, we'll let history be the judges of that. Like, I don't even, uh, something stupid about, I guess we'll let other people be the judge of that or whatever. And everyone agrees that I beat him up because he was doing weird stuff. I punched him in the face twice. It was not like a super intense fight. No NBA Matumbo, WWE SmackDown stuff, but it was definitely Definitely, definitely a fight nonetheless. I fought a crazy emo kid in one, punched him in the face repeatedly, which I guess is as close to a fight as you can get. Uh, I actually had a couple more interactions with this kid, but I'll save those for another video because this is getting long. If you want more stories about this kid, let me know in the comment section down below. I, I would appreciate it. But on that note, that's going to do it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Comment, like, subscribe if you're new, all that good stuff, and hopefully I'll see you soon with another video. My name is Scrubby. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. I'm out. Peace. Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an incredible day. I know I am. If you are, I would appreciate you smashing that like button harder than Logan Paul smashed Chloe Bennett. That's right, guys. No joke, no scam. I'm feeling a little bit sick today, so if I sound a little unenthusiastic, that's why I feel like I might have actually gotten hit with a meteor that destroyed Tilted Towers. But that's not going to stop me from providing some juicy, goddamn content to you, beautiful people. You little, I, I don't know, something that's beautiful. Daisy, daisies, daisy flowers. You guys or flowers. I don't, okay, whatever you think you are, all right, that's what you are in my head. So I'm gonna be telling you guys the story of a kid that thought he was a SoundCloud rapper that went to my school. That's right, cringe entailed. Homeboy looked like, uh, I don't know, Post Malone without the tattoos and a Jewish last name, all right? He was definitely not the rapper type at all, and, uh, the level of cringe that was delivered off him swearing that he was the next Eminem was, was delicious and juicy. His name was Charles, no joke. I, I'm not even gonna use a fake name because Charles fits him so well, and Charles liked to rap about things that made him feel hood, you know? Charles liked to be like, yeah, I grew up on the streets. And you know, Charles did not grow up on the street. And I know Charles did not grow up on the street because me and him were neighbors. Well, we lived on the same street. We weren't exactly neighbors, but you guys get the idea. And I know Charles did not grow up in the hood because he had two Jewish parents that were the CEO of a company in the area and a finance officer. So a homeboy literally had the opposite of the street. He drove his own golf cart to school and was like, yeah, I grew up in the hood. You know, I've had to see things. Like what, bro? The only thing you've had to see is silver silverware and your college paid for by the time you were seven. This kid had never experienced anything like street in his life, but would wear do-rags to school and talk about how hard growing up on the streets was. And it was just super duper cringy and everybody would just kind of let Charles run his mouth about, you know, how hood he was because it was super entertaining. Like I said, he was the exact opposite of hood. So hearing this explanation of, yeah, man, you know, I really grew up on the streets was just a, a, a joyful experience. And along with wearing do-rags, keep in mind, this kid is a 5'5 Jewish kid. He is a short, chubby Jewish kid with a do-rag on. Anyways, getting back to the main point of the story. So one day, we're out in PE. That's right, everybody. Physical education. The jewel of American educational system. Something about throwing balls at other people's faces just really puts a smile on your face. That's what she said. And uh, we were just kind of hanging out. It was a Friday, and on Fridays, there wasn't really much to do, and our PE coaches didn't really care what we did as long as we did not bother them. Like, as long as they could sit next to each other and talk about, you know, March Madness or whatever event was going on, they did not care what we did on Fridays. Because to be honest, they did not get paid enough to deal with our crap which is fair. You know, if you're a teacher, uh, I would not want to deal with a bunch of screaming 14 and 15 year olds all day. That seems like the worst form of torture imaginable. Maybe that's how we can get information out of people we capture during war. You just put them in a room with teenagers and be like, tell them about what you like. And they'll go on and on about how they're going to go pro in Fortnite and wear do-rags and call everybody dog, even though they grew up in like the most w white class suburb of all time. That would drive me insane. They would get all the information out of me after five minutes. I'd be like, fine, I'll talk. I'll talk. Just please, please get Charles away from me. The level of cringe is unbearable. I can't.
I can't do this anymore. Regardless, in PE, we were all just kind of sitting on this bench and somebody has the speaker and starts playing beats on their phone. And then some people who could rap at least a little bit, we're, we're just kind of meme rapping. Like we're literally out here just kind of talking about dumb stuff like, uh, yo, I took a fart and it smelt like cabbage. Everybody knows I'm above the average. Like just stupid stuff that is not serious. Dumb things just trying to make each other laugh. And everybody's having a great time just kind of hanging out, talking about dumb rap songs that don't really mean anything. And like I said, Charles thought he was going to be a rapper. He had a SoundCloud. Everybody that would listen, he'd ask to listen to his mixtape. And he was one of these people where like, he'd ask for advice. He'd be like, hey, yo, what do you think of my SoundCloud? And if you answered honestly and he, you didn't like it, he'd be like, man, you're just a hater. When I make it, you're going to be so jealous. So regardless, this guy is just kind of a... Uh, kind of watching it from afar as we're meme rapping, just having a good time laughing, joking around, not taking it seriously. Nobody's flaming each other. It's just a chill Friday. Everybody's hanging out, trying to get a good vibe going before the weekend. But I guess, you know, Charles just couldn't have that because he walks over, swags on over with his do-rag on, really looking like the man. Ooh, Eminem himself, Slim Shady, would cower in fear at the form of Charles slowly walking towards him. Yo, Eminem, you might be the real Slim Shady, but you got nothing on Charles Lebowski, all right? That is right. I will destroy you. I will eat you like a Chipotle burrito. That is the type of kid that Charles was anyways. So he kind of walks up and says, yo, let me drop a beat. And we're all like, yeah, how about no, Charles? Because uh, it, you're, you don't, you're not good at rapping, one. Two, for some reason, the kid always felt like he just had to diss everybody in a rap song. Like he could not just rap about, you know, eating gummy bears and, and sniffing candles. No, 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 we had to talk about how he's banging your mom in 14 different languages while singing the Teletubbies theme song and uh, talking about how every teacher in here sucks and is stupid and how he's gonna make it one day. Like, he could not just have a good time. Everything had to be a battle rap in his reason, all right? Like, I guess the only experience he's had with the streets is watching 8 Mile 47 times, you know, the Eminem movie? Because Homeboy was really, really not the type of person that you wanted to have in a battle rap situation. But whatever, he's, like, convinced that that's every rap group ever has to just diss each other and rap diss tracks. So he's like, nah, nah, let me drop a beat and show you how it's really done. And we're like, oh, how it's really done. Yes, Charles, I'm sure you are a rap master. Everyone knows that you dropped the sickest bars of all time. And he's not going away. We're like, no, we're not gonna let you and he's like, please, please, please. And we're like, fine, 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 Charles. You can drop your raps. No one's going to be interested. You suck at rapping. No one wants to hear a diss track. We make it very clear. Please do not ruin the mood. We're having a good time. Please do not come out swinging, telling everybody they're ugly and smell like fish sticks. All right, please don't. We're just trying to have a good time. And he's like, man, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen, which is the stupidest thing ever because we own the kitchen. Get out, Charles. No one wants you here. You're not Gordon Ramsay. This is not Hell's Kitchen. Shut your mouth and leave. But whatever, he's not going to leave. So we're like, fine, you can rap. And there was a guy in our group whose name, I I'm just going to make this one up. His name is Zach. And Zach's mom had just passed away. And that's going to be important in a little bit. And he was not handling it well. And no one would bring it up and make fun of it because we're not heartless people. Like, I'm not actually sitting here hoping that people are dramatically upset at traumatic things going on in their life. That's not my goal is to make people upset all the time, right? So everybody's just kind of sitting here here hanging out and Charles is still consistently saying that he's gonna drop a diss track and the hottest beats are gonna be slamming out everywhere across the universe it's gonna be so gnarly you guys can't wait to see this thing where he's gonna drop some sick bars and show everybody what a real MC is like all right dude it's 1982 we're calling everybody MCs again I, I see how it is whatever so we start playing him a beat that sounds like clown shoes getting clapped together and he's like really feeling it he's moving his head around really animated and we're like oh Charles this is gonna be cringe please please do not do this please Please, for the love of God, do not do it. And he starts rapping, and it's not even close to sounding good. Like, for some reason, you know when someone's trying to rap, and it's almost good, but it's not? Uh, no, 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 not even like that. It's just horrible. He's like, yeah, I'ma tie my shoes. Everybody knows that I like moves. I, I farted on the track, and it smells like booty. It was just not good, because it's kind of fruity. Like, that's the type of bars that this kid is trying to pass as the greatest rapper of our generation, Slim Shady, please stand up, I am a god tier rapper situation. It is not good at, at all. And so we're all kind of laughing at him, which I guess really annoyed him and pissed him off, because he goes, you guys made some whack rules, yo. I, I ain't gonna be able to do none of this unless I'm able to drop some real heat flaming one of you. And we're like, look, dude, we just don't want you to do it. Please don't. And he's like, nah, you guys laughed. You lost my respect. I'm going to drop the heat now. And we're like, all right, buddy, fine. I, I guess you can really drop the heat on us. Wow. No one here wants to hear it, but but fine, dude. Since you're clearly not going to shut up and leave us alone, go ahead, drop your diss track. That's fine. So he looks at Zach and goes, I'm battle rapping you. And we're all like, all right, um, Zach's kind of going through something. Maybe, maybe don't. It's not a good idea, right? Like, just don't go after the kid whose mom just passed away. It's a bad move. And you just, it's, it's just not cool. You just shouldn't do it. Like, 
Come on, the, the poor kid just lost his mom. He doesn't need to be battle wrapped and flamed to death by 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 Charles. All right. Not that Charles was really good at roasting anybody, but still, you know, like the kid's upset. He's not having a good time lately. It, the last thing we should do is put him in a situation where he's gonna get roasted for four minutes. But Charles is insistent. No, no, no. I need to drop the heat. I need to drop the heat, yo. I need to drop the heat. And Zach's like, it's fine, it's fine, whatever. Like as long as he gets him to shut up and go away, I'll do it. And we're all like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, fine. Well, you know, if he's cool with it, I guess I'm cool with it, of course. So they start rapping, and Charles is trying to flame him, and it's nothing good. It's talking about how he's not a good rapper, and he's poor, and all this stuff. And we're all like, all right, well, I mean, A, he's not a rapper. B, he never claimed to be rich. Like, sometimes rappers really throw around insults, you know? It's like coming to me and being like, yeah, Scrubby, you're not good at videos. Yo, I'm like, I, n I never said I was. In fact, most of the time I go, yeah, my videos, I don't know why people watch them, they just do. Like, if you're gonna flame someone, it has to be on something that they can flame. But regardless, Charles is just going in, trying to flame him, and it's just not, it's not working. No one's being like, yo, dang, he really cooked him on that one. Everybody's just kind of like, all right, Charles, you're, you're just annoying. No one wants to hang out with you. You are not being amusing here. And he's just going on and on about how, oh, you're, you're a hoe. Oh, yeah, I get roasted, bro. Oh, rice gum on the track. Oh, your, your shoe line is whack. Yeah, your hair is ugly. And we're just kind of like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he's kind of realizing that we're not impressed, and he wants to get roasted even more. He wants more flames. He wants more more bars. He wants us to be entertained. He wants us to be hyped up. So he looks at Zach and says, your mom might be dead, but don't let that get in your head. And we're all like, uh, 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 what? What did you just say, bro? Did you really just cook this kid's dead mom because of a rap battle to try to get a reaction? And Zach immediately, without hesitation, punches Charles in the face and, and and everyone's like yeah you deserved it and he's like bro what the hell we were just roasting we were just roasting and I'm like no 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 you're not just roasting you need to understand you max brain cell dead moron you can't flame someone's dead mom you idiot especially like right after it happened like this is two weeks after it happened and so Zach punches him in the face and Charles is like yo bro you don't want to fight me I've been on the streets and starts trying to swing on even more of them. So Charles and Zach are throwing fists to cuffs because you flame the kid's dead mom and you're like surprised that there's a bad situation. And then, while Charles is trying to swing, he hits another kid that's standing next to them and it makes absolutely no sense. Like imagine you're fighting somebody because you made fun of their dead mom, so you swing on somebody else? I, I don't think so. So now he's getting tag teamed by like three kids who are just beating him and everybody's like, yeah, you deserve this. You made fun of a kid's dead mom, you kind of deserve to get beat up. And he's like, yo, chillax, chillax. And we're all like, no, there is no chillaxing. You're you're an idiot. You're an absolute moron. No one even wanted you to hang out with you. We told you he didn't want you to flame anyone and you just had to do it anyways. You just didn't think at all. Your thought process was, yeah, better make fun of a kid's dead mom. YOLO. So whatever, the coaches come over and they break it up. And they get into the dean's office and everybody gets suspended because for some reason in school, if you get in a fight, everyone gets suspended. Like they can't just use logic and go, clearly not everybody here is a guilty party. I'm sorry. If I got suspended for fighting someone who made fun of my dead mom, I would take that suspension with pride. I'd be like, yeah, you bet I got suspended. And I do it again. Literally nothing would change. Afterwards, uh, you know, obviously they had to get moved classes because when you fight in our school, you, you can't really stay in the class with the person you just fought. That's not how it works. That's not how the process goes. So they all get suspended. He gets moved out of class and uh, proceeds to tell everyone who wasn't there that he won the fight three on one, which is just not true. There's like videos of it, but whatever. Charles is bragging about how he fought seven kids at once with one tan behind his back while rapping Slim Shady and, and doing the Macarena. It was the most insane thing of all time. And everybody just didn't believe him because they knew it wasn't true. And uh, Charles proceeded to get beat up quite a few more times in high school. I have a lot of stories based upon his process and his thing. And, and him just constantly trying to rap and looking cool. He's a massive goofball. It was not, not a good situation of all time. But uh, yeah, moral of the story is don't make fun of a kid's dead mom during a rap battle when no one likes you anyways, and you shouldn't have any problem. In fact, just don't make fun of people's dead parents, period. Regardless of the situation, don't do any of it. None of it is good. None of it is beneficial at all. At all. On that note, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would appreciate you smashing that like button. It helps the video do better. So does a comment. All that stuff really does help the video do better. Uh, I I've, I've really been killing it on the long story times. So I know you guys really like them when they're longer, so I've been doing my best to make them as long as humanly possible to make you guys happy, make you guys smile, make you guys feel as happy as possible because I, I do appreciate you guys. I don't say it enough, but without you, my, uh, my life would be completely different and I really thank you guys so much for everything you do. 
I really, really do appreciate you. But on that note, guys, my name is Scrubby. Hopefully, I'll see you next time with another video. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure that they're the hottest, most indescribable rapper in the game, the most savage, number one savages of all time to ever exist. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having an absolutely incredible day. I know I am. If you are, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. A scary man by the name of Jimothy will be breaking into your house tonight and stealing your front teeth. Yeah, that's right. I know Jimothy from way back in prison, you know, uh, but we'll get into those stories eventually when I was, uh, you know, on the yard with Prison Mike and the Dementors. But regardless, uh, Jimothy will be breaking into your house tonight unless you press the like button. Sorry guys, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. As you guys can tell, today we're going to be talking about the world's craziest food fight, you know, that's why you clicked on the video, and I have to do a little bit of a disclaimer just because Susan and the rest of the Minecraft and uh, YouTube team love to demonetize my videos. I'm not saying you guys should go start a food fight, let me make that very clear, okay? Just because I had a bunch of fun shoving mustard in people's eyes doesn't mean that you should have fun shoving mustard in people's eyes, you know what I'm saying? Regardless, I felt like I would make that clear, and uh, without further ado, let's hop right into this shiznit. So when I was in high school, I really liked getting in trouble, you know? There's, there's just something about getting in trouble that is more fun than anything else in the world, all right? Like, getting yelled at by a principal for inappropriate behavior might still be up there for one of my favorite things of all time. And not inappropriate, like, cringy kids sneaking in the bathroom inappropriate, but inappropriate, like, uh, you knew you shouldn't fill trombones with ketchup, but doing it anyways, you know? Like, that's the type of inappropriate that I really enjoyed. And regardless, uh, I, I just always found ways to get into trouble when I was in high school. I'm not really sure. I just had a talent for it, you know? Like, I was basically the LeBron James of getting into mischief, and, uh, one of I'm about to tell you might actually be the highlight of my career, all right? Like, if I am the LeBron James of causing mischief, this is my finals MVP moment. The moment where I actually transcended an, a normal kid getting in trouble into superstardom, you know? I, I really just went out and uh, caused the biggest, biggest splash I possibly could. And regardless, it is a pretty funny story because it ends up uh, with, with me on the news, you know? <laughs> That's what's going on. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the food fight. So, in my junior year of high school, I really thought I was the shiz, you know? Like, I, I honestly thought I was basically LeBron James. I already said that in this video, but uh, I had just gotten my license, and I, I really thought I was dope, and by being dope, I thought that, you know, skipping school and going out and hanging out with my friends was actually the coolest thing I could ever do. Who needs an education when you can drive a car, you know what I mean? And most of the time, I would skip school by just going to my friend's school for lunch, you know? The girl I was dating at the time went to school with a bunch of my best friends. My best friends went to the school, and I had a car, so uh, I could honestly yeet on out whenever. Uh, my doorbell just rang. My pizza's here. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back with pizza. Uh, uh, I forgot where I was. Let me listen back real quick. Okay. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, you know, I used to flip on over for lunch and be like, hey, what's up? I'm up in the cut. I don't go here, but I'm going to eat here. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you got to break bread with new people just to get new experiences. Regardless, uh, I'm at my friend's school for lunch basically every single day, and I blended in because uh, they went to a school full of tall white kids, and I am, in fact, a tall white kid. So, you know, so I just blended in the background. I had that invisibility cloak like in Harry Potter. You know, I, I drank the potion that turns you into somebody new. But regardless, I'm really pulling up and blending in like an expert every day at my friend's school, just doing the absolute most to stay unaccessible from teachers, dog. And, and they're trying, you know, they're on the hunt for me. Realistically, they weren't on the hunt for me because I blended in. That was the entire point. But you guys get the idea. I'm at my friend's uh, school for lunch every single day. And you know, one day I'm sitting at lunch trying to avoid getting in trouble and my friend does the unthinkable. He dares me to do something and then afterwards says, and I quote, no balls. And you know, I don't know if you guys are savages like I am, but when someone tells me no balls, I won't do something, I have a sudden urge to do it. Like, honestly, if somebody was like, hey, rob that bank, no balls. All right, man, give me a ski mask. I got to do what I got to do. I'm not actually going to rob a bank if you say no balls, but like, you guys get the idea. You know, especially in high school, if somebody said no balls to something, I was like, all right, well, now I just have to do it. It's, it's the law of the land. Uh, every girl watching this video has no idea what I'm saying. No ballsing is basically when your friends uh, imply that you are not a man because you refuse to do a task, you know? And uh, when you're an insecure teenager, it very much works. So, whatever, my friend no balls me and I look him in the eyes and I say, have you ever known me to back down from a challenge, Jeremy? Uh, in reality, he uh, no balls me to do the following. But anyways, my friend no balls me to yeet some food across the lunchroom. He says, Ryan, you, you won't throw the food across the, the lunchroom, though. And I'm like, dude, I don't even go here. Like, even if I get in trouble, what, they're going to suspend me from a school I don't go to? Whatever. And uh, this man was actually eating a ham sandwich at the time. And he's putting it up to his mouth to take another bite. And I grab it out of his hands. And I say, <clears throat> and I quote, hello. This is empty. 
yeet. And I throw that ham sandwich halfway across the lunchroom. And that thing goes flying. I'm pretty sure if there wouldn't have been a roof on the cafeteria, it might have gone into orbit. You hear that, Elon Musk? I know SpaceX is looking for new engineers, but uh, if your rockets cost and uh, weigh the same amount as a ham sandwich, I can throw them into orbit. You don't even have to have rockets anymore. So obviously, I send this ham sandwich straight into orbit. I'm watching it fly away, and my friend's like, oh, you actually did it, dude. That's insane. Oh, you sent it. You sent it. Anyways, I sent this ham sandwich into orbit, and it smacks a kid into the back of the head. And I hear the ham sandwich make like a thud sound on the back of this kid's noggin, and I'm like, huh. Well, you know what? Uh, that probably hurt because I don't know about you, but if I got hit in the back of the head with a ham sandwich, I would not be too pleased with the fact that I was now covered in what was once a pig. I would be a very unhappy fellow. So obviously, after smacking this kid in the back of the head with a ham sandwich, he turns around and is like looking for who threw it. But of course, me, Sly Cooper, Scrubby, the savage I am, I duck that look back and we just act like nothing's going on. And I, it looks like we're laughing at a joke, because obviously we're entertained with the fact that I smacked a kid in the back of the head with a ham sandwich, but he has no idea where it came from, you know? Like, you know when you're being stealthy in a game and you throw a rock and the guards go to look at the rock and you just yeet on by him? That, that's basically what it was like. So I'm feeling like a stealth ninja who got away with throwing a ham sandwich, but this kid was looking for revenge. And I see him kind of looking around still, still trying to look for it, and then I realize he has food in his hands and uh, he's probably gonna throw it back once he finds out who threw the food at him and the table next to us I guess was staring at him and laughing so he thought that they did it so he picks up some food and he throws it at that table right the only problem is this guy is not you know accurate like I am throwing ham sandwiches into orbit instead he's throwing like Helen Keller you know Ray Charles somebody who's blind because he misses the table he's aiming at and it goes sailing over the top and lands on this girl's table so keep in mind I threw this ham sandwich maybe 30 seconds ago and now four tables have been smacked with food in this lunchroom like I I don't know if you see those odds, but it's multiplying and getting out of control very quickly. In the next 30 seconds, that's mean there'll be 8 tables, and then 16, and next thing you know, you know, every table in America is throwing food at each other, and I'm not trying to interrupt everybody's Thanksgiving dinner. So, uh, I'm kind of laying low, and me and my friends are laughing hysterically now, because, uh, obviously, I never intended to start World War III with a ham sandwich, but apparently that's what's going on, and I'm pretty sure Trump said he was gonna draft everybody for this next food war, because, uh, North Korea was pulling up on the DMZ with grapes and hand. So at this point, the uh, entire cafeteria is erupting. Everyone's throwing food, and the girls hit the deck to try to avoid it. And you know, like, at, at one point, there's backpacks flying through the air, there's chairs. Like, I don't understand when people hear a food fight, they go, hmm, better throw a plastic chair across the room, but that's what people are doing. So obviously, it starts to get out of control really quick. There's food flying everywhere, there's liquid flying everywhere, chairs, backpacks, binders, basically everything you can imagine starts flying around. And the girls, not wanting to get their clothes dirty, start trying to make a break for the outside, so they open all the double doors on the gymnasium, right? The only problem is when they start leaving, the food fight starts to follow them outside. So like now half the lunchroom is in the courtyard and everybody else is filing out the doors, except now we're starting to run out of food. So people are starting to throw just like anything they have in their hands. Like I said, backpacks. One girl got hit in the head with a binder and got a concussion. Like people are starting to get out of hand very, very quickly. And it's crazy how much uh, something that was fun 30 seconds ago starts to be terrifying. Cause you know, a minute ago I threw a ham sandwich and now people are throwing binders across the world and starting to just smack people upside the top of the head. And obviously the teachers are trying to calm it down, but you try to calm down 500 kids that are throwing chairs, trash cans, and everything you've ever seen. At one point, I'm pretty sure a child got thrown, all right? I don't know where the child came from. Maybe it was a teen mom or something, but there was a baby flying through the air. And uh, the teachers are trying. They're like, kids, kids, please stop. But like I said, you try to stop 500 kids just throwing everything within sight. It's never going to happen. However, the principal, for some reason, thought that uh, they were going to be able to calm it down. They were going to really try to calm down these kids because everybody really really respects principals for some reason that's sarcasm so whatever the principal gets into the middle of the crowd and she starts screaming something about now you kids behave or whatever and uh, around the middle of the courtyard is like a second level like a balcony level and uh, all around the school are these big gray trash cans I'm pretty sure like every school has the same trash cans you know school is trash so therefore they have the same trash cans I'm pretty sure that's the motto and uh, regardless everybody knows the big gay big gay big gay big gray gray trash cans that I'm talking Talking about you know the ones that are like waist high and uh, I don't know who decided to yeet one of these over the edge but the principal is of course in the middle of the crowd screaming calm down break it up stop and uh, it's not doing a lot and somebody from the second floor decides I'm gonna throw this trash can into the crowd and I'm sure their thought wasn't I'm gonna hit the principal but uh, obviously you know the principal standing in the middle of this giant crowd it's pretty obvious where she is and the next thing you see is almost in slow motion this giant gray trash can come flying 
flying out of the sky, almost like something out of a horror movie, you know? Where you know the jump scare is coming, but there's nothing you can do. And I have to watch in horror as this principal is mightily and quickly RKO'd by the John Cena trash can, alright? I'm calling it the John Cena trash can because, uh, she did not see it coming, okay? She gets smacked with Oscar the Grouch's relocation home upside the head so hard that she just goes flying over. Like, falls over on her butt. So at this point, me and my friends realize, oh my god, we started a food fight that just got the principal smited down from Almighty Thor with the trash can. This is not gonna end well. Like, this is a 0 out of 10 situation. And, uh, keep in mind, I don't even go here. So if I get caught starting the food fight, not only am I getting in trouble for starting the food fight that just got a principal yeeted with a trash can, but I'm also in trouble for ditching school constantly. Like, that's just a no bueno. So, uh, I hightail to the parking lot, I escape with my life into before anyone can do any investigative work, okay? Before any crack people crack the case, and uh, I zip on out of there as fast as humanly possible, right? And obviously, you know, them being them, they start investigating almost immediately who caused this food fight. Because now it's not personal, you know, it's not a mess, it's not just rough for the custodian. But uh, somebody decided to yeet a trash can at the principal, and that's a big no-no in school. Did you guys know that, that hitting a principal with the trash can actually is against the rules? Yeah, 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 it took me by surprise too. I thought they were going to be fine with it and just be like, eh, accidents happen. No. No, they were very, very upset that uh, the principal was in fact smited by Thor himself with a giant trash can. They were not big fans of that. So regardless, I get back to my school, there's a mustard stain on the bottom left hand side of my shirt, but I'm doing my best to act like it's not there, you know, uh, maybe I dropped something on my, uh, my shirt at lunch. So I go home that night and my mom's like, hey, where'd this thing come from? So I tell her the same story, I dropped it at lunch, and she's like, oh, okay, no big deal. And, uh, that night, me and my family are watching TV together while we're eating dinner, and my mom turned on the news, like, I, I don't really know why we were watching the news, but my mom, for some reason, decided to turn on the news. And we're sitting there, and, uh, sure enough, my friend's high school comes up on the news and my mom's like oh what's this story about so she turns up the volume and uh, the news anchor basically says a girl at the school during a food fight was hit in the head with a binder and got a concussion and my mom's like oh my gosh I can't believe that kids would be so irresponsible to start a food fight that's something you're only supposed to see in the movies I would be so embarrassed if you ever did that Ryan like I cannot believe that somebody especially at that school because it's such a reputable area I would be so embarrassed and I'm like Haha, yeah mom whoever started that food fight sure is a Sure is a dummy. You should never start a food fight ever mom. That's just a big no-no Just totally trying to lean into the fact that I didn't do it and honestly I never got caught because uh, I guess the people at the other school were looking for a tall kid with brown hair Which just happens to be half of the population of the school So it's probably really difficult to go find somebody you know what I'm saying like I I I'm sure it's not too great So whatever I got away with it I ended up starting a food fight that got a principal eat with a trash can and was honestly probably the craziest food fight to ever exist in the United States of America. But on that note, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would really, really appreciate you guys pressing the like button, commenting down below, and also, you ready for it? <gasps> pressing the subscribe button and turning on notifications today's notification shout out goes to the one the only dean vega 76 big shout out to you if you want a notification shout out all you got to do is press the notification bell screenshot it and send it to my instagram at scrubby and uh yeah i shout somebody out every day but on that note guys i hope you guys have an incredible one don't get anyone pregnant and if you do make sure they don't start food fights and i'll uh, see you guys tomorrow with another video i'm out peace Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video, feeling fresh and lackadaisical as always. Hope y'all are having a beautiful day. If you are, be sure to press that like button. Let me know what's going on. Uh, what, what'd you have for lunch? Leave what you had for lunch in the comments down below. You know, I'm feeling curious. As you can tell, I'm a little bit hungry as I'm recording this. Today we're gonna be talking about the time a kid in my class wanted to, uh, fight the teacher, you know? Not that big of a deal, just throwing fisticuffs with, uh, Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus. The, the usual. <laughs> it's a pretty funny story, so buckle your seatbelt, get ready for a wild ride, and, uh, yeah, let's Let's get into this, guys. So when I was a freshman in high school, I had this teacher named, um, I I'm gonna change his name for the purpose of the video, but I'm gonna name him Mr. Ballista. Mr. Ballista, you know, an old school Call of Duty sniper rifle. That's what he was named after, you know? And Mr. Ballista was a pretty hard guy. He was near retirement. I'm pretty sure he was a veteran of, like, every single war ever, you know? He, he was a really old dude, and it was his last few years teaching, which meant he really didn't care, because as a teacher, your retirement's pretty secure, and you can pretty much do whatever you want once you have tenure, and especially since you're gonna retire, in a year or two, the school won't really 
fire you or do anything. So he just had the ability to not care about anything. Like if you were sassy to him, if you were rude to him, he didn't care because what did he have to lose? Absolutely nothing. Nothing was going to happen. And he made that very clear on the first day of school when somebody was on their phone and he just took their phone, threw it across the room and told them to go get it. I mean, at least to me, somebody who usually does goof around, it was pretty obvious that this guy did not care and would do absolutely anything to keep his classroom under control. So it was better to just stay out of his way, all right? You know, it's like jumping in front of a tra freight train. Yeah, you can, but the freight train is still gonna run you over and you're gonna look like a pancake, so maybe just don't do it. At least that's how I saw it. But I guess some people saw it as a challenge, you know, to like try to challenge the old dude who clearly had no reason to be nice to you, which to me is just dumb. But whatever, kids thought it was really cool to try to get under his skin and see how big of a reaction they could get. And as I mentioned, he didn't care. But in my class, we had a lot of uh, bad actors that really just enjoyed being in trouble for some reason. I don't know about you, but I hated being in trouble in school, okay? I, I was in trouble a lot because I'm just a bad kid, or I was a bad kid, but I hated being in trouble at school because it was so awkward. You had to go sit in the cold office. Your nipples would be hard enough to cut diamonds because it's so cold in there. Not fun. Not a fun experience. But I guess some kids were weirdly into it. Now one of these kids who I'm gonna call Hokage, because he is uh, the next Hokage, he was he was a weeaboo, that's all you need to know, decided that it was his mission in life to try to get Mr. Ballista to freak out and have a panic attack and just absolutely go off on him. Why that was his goal, I have no idea, but that was the plan. He was talking every day about how he had a new way to make him mad and all this stuff, and he was a bad guy. Just to clarify, me and Mr. Hokage, or the kid Hokage, did not get along. I really, really did not like this kid, mainly because he was just a bad person. And not a bad person in the, oh, you're a teenager and you make mistakes kind of way, but in the type of way where you just knew this kid was gonna end up in prison three years after high school. This kid was constantly just stealing things and getting in fights and, like, biting people, you know, when a 16-year-old, 14-year-old, I don't know how old he is, I, I don't really care, is biting people, you probably got some messed up issues, yeah, and this kid was one of those people, so whenever he was flexing about the fact that he was gonna make the teacher mad at him, I would just kind of roll my eyes and be like, yeah, I, I would be mad too, I mean, your parents are disappointed in you, I don't know why a teacher wouldn't be either, but whatever, this was Hokage's new life mission to piss off Mr. Ballista and make him freak out, so in order to do this, Hokage starts digging into Mr. Ballista's personal life, and this is just a no-no, never dig into somebody's personal life, okay, it's personal for a reason, you don't need to know your teacher's favorite flavor of coffee in order to understand that they're teaching you history, all right? It's just not necessary. But whatever, he just was really, really, really into learning everything he could about Mr. Ballista in order to get under his skin better. And something he found out was that Mr. Ballista's wife had cancer. And listen, I, I got along pretty well with Mr. Ballista. I really appreciate people who are straight up and honest and strict. And he was really forward about the rules. He was really honest about what you could do to stay out of trouble. So I had no problem staying out of trouble in his class. But Okage just wouldn't listen, and when he found out that his wife had cancer, he proceeded to tell the entire class about it. Which is just not cool. You don't need to do that. Like, clearly Mr. Ballista is struggling with some issues over here, and you broadcasting it to the class with a megaphone being like, by the way, his wife has cancer, just makes you look like a horrible person. So, of course, Mr. Ballista gets mad at this and basically tells him to go to the dean's office and reports him to the dean and goes, look, he's telling kids in my class that my wife has cancer. I don't need to deal with this. I come to school to not have to think about it, and now everyone's talking about it. Everyone's being nice to me. He's like, I don't want pity. I don't want sympathy. I just want to teach my class. I don't want this kid going around telling people my personal business. I just don't. That's not what I want. Fair enough, Mr. Ballista. I don't blame you, man. Hokage is a bit of a tool for leaking the fact that your wife has cancer to the class. So the next few weeks go pretty normally. Everything kind of calms down. You can tell Mr. Ballista has a strong, strong, strong hatred for Hokage. But uh, not, not much he can really do. The school has denied his request to get him moved out of the class, which is just dumb. If you have a kid basically doxing the teacher and leaking personal information, it's probably a good idea to just put them in a new class, make sure they don't get along. And, uh, you know, especially with a teacher like Mr. Ballista, who does not care and has nothing to lose at this point, it's a really, really, really good idea to make sure that these two people stay apart. And then, the moment you've all been waiting for. One day, we're sitting in class, I don't remember what we're learning about, but I guess Hokage just wasn't having it, and he goes, when are we gonna use this in real life? Which was just, I, I get the question, I understand the premise, but the way he said it is what was rude. And Mr. Ballista goes, well, to be honest, you'll probably never use it in your life because you're going to end up working at McDonald's, which is pretty savage and true. I, I don't know where Hokage is, probably in prison or at a McDonald's, one of the two. 
And I guess this really set Hokage off because the entire class laughed. Because how are you not going to laugh at a teacher just roasting this kid who's clearly not a good person in front of everybody? It's just a funny experience to watch, right? And I guess this set Hokage off in a way that he had never been set off before because he looks Mr. Ballista in the eye and says, well, at least my wife doesn't have cancer. And I do not understand how you can say that to another human being. Like, imagine finding out that somebody's wife has a disease that kills millions of people every year and then using it in an argument when he says you're gonna work at McDonald's. You're gonna work at McDonald's. Yeah, well, at least my mom's not in a wheelchair. Like, that's the level of terrible person we are reaching here. You just shouldn't be able to say that to another human being unless you're actually a sociopath like a Shane Dawson documentary, right? And the entire like class just opens their jaws and it, it's just silent. You know the type of silence where you can cut the silence with a knife because it's so thick and everybody is just sitting there like, oh my god, he actually just said that. I cannot believe that these words actually came out of another human being's mouth. Yeah, that's the reaction that all of us had because we just witnessed Mr. Potato Head, Hokage over here, tell a teacher that at least my wife doesn't have cancer. And I, I'm i just sitting here flabbergasted, waiting for the response that I'm assuming is going to be pure rage and a death throw under this kid's skull. And Mr. Ballista furrows his brow and goes, what did you just say? And he goes, at least my wife doesn't have cancer. And at this moment, I'm getting ready to have to hold back Mr. Ballista because I'd want to kill this kid if I was in his position. And he looks at him and he goes, son, you are by far the most disrespectful degenerate I have ever had in my classroom. And I feel bad for the fact that the only way you're ever going to see anyone who loves you is behind prison bars and turns back around. I don't know how the stoic Mr. Ballista handled this situation like a god, but here we are, no fist to cuffs being thrown, and he just blasted the kid even harder. You know when, like, you're trying to make someone mad, and you're trying to, you know, get under their skin, and they kind of hit you with the, sorry, you're kind of pathetic, I'm not gonna fall for it, and your ego's just crushed? That, that's the situation we have here, except Hokage isn't going to take no for an answer because now he looks like an absolute jerk for no reason in front of the entire class and he can't have that. So he goes, oh yeah, you old man, you won't fight me, blah, 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 blah. And, and Mr. Ballista goes, you're right, I'm not going to fight you because you're pathetic. You're a pathetic child. You're a pathetic child and I'm sorry that your parents don't give you enough attention at home. And the entire class at this point is like, oh my god, he's actually flaming this kid. Like imagine you're trying to be a savage, getting a guy to fight you, making fun of his wife having cancer, and all he's doing is calling you pathetic that's gotta hurt the ego folks this is what's gonna annoy this kid and plus okage is one of these kids that thrives off attention so the fact that he's getting none of it all he's getting is roasted and being made fun of in front of everybody is just driving him up the wall so he gets up and gets up in mr ballista's face and goes yeah well give me one reason i shouldn't knock you out right now and mr ballista goes because you can't and he pulls back to hit the teacher and at this point like five guys are getting up to go pull him apart and he swings at the teacher mr ballista somehow moves out of the way of the punch and goes and you just got yourself expelled buddy and everybody like grabs grabs Okage pulls him out of the class towards the office We get him in the Dean's office tell him everything that happened They actually call the school police because it was technically like a soul I don't understand what happened there because he didn't hit him But the school police get involved They're basically like taking this kid to juvie for trying to assault a teacher and Mr. Ballista during this whole situation, cool as a cucumber. You could tell the cancer comments did bother him, but I mean, who wouldn't be bothered by that? Like, what a terrible kid for making fun of that. So, uh, yeah, Hukage got expelled for trying to assault a teacher, and um, I, I really hope he's in prison somewhere, because anybody willing to make fun of a wife having cancer isn't a really good person, just throwing that out there. Definitely not the best type. You know, whatever, I'm not saying you can never make a cancer joke, because sometimes they can be pretty funny, but you don't look someone in the eyes whose wife has cancer and make fun of the fact that their wife has cancer. That's how you know you're just an absolute absolutely terrible human being and I, I really am glad he got expelled karma did its job that's the key here i'm really thankful that karma came in punched this kid in the throat and i gave him what he just deserved you know it's just desserts on that note guys that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed if you did be sure to press the like button let me know in the comment section down below what you thought if you liked the video if you didn't like the video i'd love to hear what you think I know this was a pretty long story. I just remember it really, really vividly because it's one of the worst things I think I've ever seen a human being do to another human being. So it's just kind of lodged in my memory like a uh, pitchfork lodged into the side of the frontal lobe of an Amish boy in a farming accident. And yeah, on that note, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Follow me on Twitter at ScrubbyVivo, Instagram at Scrubby underscore YT. Buy some merch if you haven't already because that's pretty cool. And um, remember, don't get anyone pregnant. And if you do, make sure they're hot. One more thing, by the way. Uh, I, I, I was just really close to 10 minutes, to be honest.
What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day. I know I am and if you are be sure to press the like button otherwise no joke no scam. You'll be strapped to the top of a semi truck and be forced to eat every bug that flies in your general direction. Trust me it's pretty gross. I wouldn't want to do it so uh press the like button. Hope you guys are having a good day like I said my name is Scrubby and as you can tell from the title and thumbnail today I've got quite the tale for you lads so buckle your seatbelts and get ready ready for an entertaining fun ride without further ado let's get into it anyways guys as I've said a couple times in a different few videos I used to skate a ton when I was like in middle school slash early high school me and all my friends would basically like go around and just skate a bunch of spots as much as we could because it was a ton of fun the only problem with street skating though is that like a, a lot of people don't really like you being there skaters don't have a very good reputation and sometimes you know we kind of deserve it I'm not gonna lie not all of us are uh pretty chill but most of us really aren't trying to cause trouble we're just trying to skate and there was this park near one of my friends houses that had this really really sweet like four stair that was perfect for skating it was literally the perfect run up the perfect runoff it, it was fantastic and when I was in eighth grade so like 13 14 years old we would go there relatively often you know like Actually, this experience that I'm gonna tell the story about is why I kind of stopped going to parks and skating these types of spots Like I said though, there was this park with this perfect four stair and we would go there and skate and you know I was in middle school So I was like super afraid of getting in trouble. So whenever we would go I would make sure to be on my best behavior. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful I wasn't trying to cause problems because you know, hey I just didn't want to get in trouble, all right? Like, one thing that I don't really enjoy is getting yelled at personally. I'm not a giant fan of it, all right? But uh, every now and then, you got to do what you got to do. So we were pretty respectful whenever we would be there. And for most of the time, parents wouldn't really bug us because we weren't, like, near the playground. The stairs were relatively close to the playground. But it was it was not that big of a deal, you know? Like, for the most part, parents would leave us alone because we would leave them alone. We weren't swearing around their kids. We were just chilling, just skating at the park, having ourselves a good time. And like I said, I would go with a group of friends that were also skating. And we had one... One friend in particular who was just nasty on a skateboard, all right? Like, this kid was incredible. And like I said, this four stair was pretty perfectly sized. It was a good place to learn tricks that you wanted to throw down stair sets. And he was better than all of us. Like, I got hyped one time because I heel flipped down it. And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty good. And, uh, you know, this kid was working on, like, throwing a beautiful laser flip down it. No hesitation. Just, like, absolutely gorgeous at skating everything he did. This kid was good. And one day we're sitting there and he's like, hey, I think I want to 360 it. And we're like, Alright, I mean a 360 down a four stair is doable. It's not a ton of time to spin You have to spin pretty quick, but like hey, you could do it sure go for it, bro So he starts practicing it and he's not landing it beautifully every time the first couple times He's like messing up and kind of jumping off the board landing on his feet for those of you that don't know what it looks like You just kind of jump off like it, it's not rocket science and uh, he's working on it for probably an hour or so and finally he's getting good at it and he's starting to get to the point where like he's rolling away but slipping out at the last second like his back wheel spinning out he's really close to landing it though and we're all starting to get hyped we're like yo bro you got this because that's what you do with your friends when your friends trying to do something and you hope they succeed you're like encouraging you know why would I look at my friend trying to do something and be like yo Derek hope you die LMAO that would be funny anyways he's getting close but he goes for it again and his board snaps like the back tail part of the board snaps off and obviously, he's pretty pissed because he was getting close and he was going for it for like an hour. So he does what people do when they're frustrated sometimes. And he screams a word, alright? And this word is a very bad word on this website, okay? Because for some reason, Susan Wojcicki decided that uh, certain words are off limits if any YouTuber wants to get their video in to recommend it. But I'm gonna say, alright, he screamed the F word. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's really not that big of a deal. I know like 99% of you say it anyways, I just can't say it in videos. He screams the F word. And you know what? Was it slightly inappropriate because there was kids in the park? Sure, but he screams it and immediately just like picks up the broken board and we go to leave But uh one of the moms from the playground decides that us leaving no 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 see that's not good enough Because what I see is a mom built like an NFL linebacker Charging full speed over to the stairs and we're all sitting there uh, keep in mind We can't escape very quickly because one of us now doesn't have a skateboard All right, like in most scenarios you see an angry mom running at you You just put your board down and start running or like skating away as fast as humanly possible, right? But we're sitting here and our friend who also uh, happens to have like sprained his ankle and can't run very fast because he's been throwing himself down a set of stairs for an hour. And much like soldiers, all right.
right, no man left behind. I can't leave my friend back here to 1v1 an angry mom built like a linebacker, bro. I don't know where this woman was doing her yoga, okay? I don't know what was in her morning smoothie, but whatever was in it, I think Olympians need to do it because this mom running at us was gigantic, okay? And I'm not even trying to make fun of her. She was like scary big. You know when you walk into a room and someone's so big, you're like, oh yeah, if they wanted to, they could probably eat every person in this room. I've been rereading the Percy Jackson book lately and she reminded me of the cyclops how massive this woman is so she's barreling towards us and we're like ah all right this is how it ends this is how we go down it's gonna be okay guys you know at least we go out together as one brothers in arms you know so she runs over she's like which one of you screamed that word um it was probably less witchy than that but you know little me has uh, altered the memory in my head to make her sound a lot scarier so she's like which one of you said that and uh, none of us snitch because, you know, as Lil Skies once said, I ain't folding under pressure, I ain't switching for no hoe, I ain't talking to no cops, and I ain't telling all my bros. And you still live by that. I ain't snitching. So we all keep our mouths shut, and she's like, whatever. Well, I guess since all of you don't want to tell me who said it, then I guess I'll just do nothing else but call the police, and they can come figure out which one of you guys is a troublemaker. And we're like... Oh no, don't call the police. Uh, could you imagine? 911, what's your emergency? Yes, there are children here. They said a very naughty word, and I need the police immediately. Send the SWAT team, send the National Guard, send everyone. I don't even care. In fact, in fa send Mace Windu. Call up Star Wars. Get him out here. I, I need everything. Anyways, uh, we decide to start walking away and try to ignore her. But the problem is, when a lady is built like a linebacker, getting ignored is not something that they're used to because they're like, <gasps> Are you guys ignoring me? And what happens next is legendary. So, not legendary, it's kind of scary. So, we're trying to walk away, and she's like, You know, you, da, 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 whatever, angry mom speak. And then she grabs our friend by the hoodie, the one who was trying to do the trick with the broken skateboard, and yanks him to the ground and is like, I bet it was you. You broke your skateboard. You think it's okay to swear when you get hurt? How dare you? Rah, rah, rah. Do you think that it's okay to swear around little kids? I bet you your mom would be so ashamed of you. How dare you decide? that it's your right to say those words around kids and is like pinning him to the ground bro we have a sumo wrestler mother pinning this kid to the ground saying that it's not okay to swear around her kids because you know hey it's not okay to swear around your kids but apparently manhandling a child that's not yours around your kids pff, perfectly fine what are they gonna do eh? Eh, eh, what you gonna do about it like, what, is, what? What? I just don't understand her logic. You can't swear around kids, but I'm allowed to attack 8th graders because, uh, they said naughty words. That's some real logical thinking. So, she's on top of our friend, and we all go over and start trying to push her off, but we can't get her off because she weighs as much as a black hole, dude. Like... I I'm usually not one to make fun of people's, you know, weight, but this girl was built like Jabba the Hutt. There was no budget her. Anyways, after a bit, we finally get her off, but what ends up happening is one of my friends has to, like, swing his skateboard at her. He misses, but she's like, Rah! It starts getting up. She's like, you guys want to go? You guys want to go? We're like, no, we just want to leave. And she's like, oh, you think you're so tough because you can fight a woman with a skateboard? We're like, we just want to leave. So we try to walk away again, and she comes after us again and is like, Trying to grab our friend's hood and is like, no, you're waiting till the cops get here. And we're like, let us go. Let us go. Le we're trying to leave. We are trying to leave. We are, like, doing our best to get out of your way as much as humanly possible. Please just let us go. And, of course, she's just not having it. She's like, oh, you, you kids are all the same. So disrespectful these days. Why is that every old person's response to any kid that, like, doesn't do exactly what they want them to? Like, any kid that thinks for themselves and doesn't just automatically listen to every adult's word 100% all the time, they're automatically like, you think you're so smart. Well, maybe I am smarter than you. You just attacked a child in a park. I'm just saying, your brain cells probably aren't very big. There, I said it. I wouldn't be surprised if late at night, dude, the lights go out and you go, Oh, uh, who turned the sun off? Because you're stupid. You're stupid if you attack children. It's really not rocket science. So, whatever. This lady's going ballistic and we're trying to get away. And at this point, there's starting to be a crowd around us because it's not every day you see gargantuan job of the hut women trying to fight like a gang of kids, dude. It, it felt like, you ever seen a, a bunch of hyenas trying to eat a hippo, bro? Like, that's how it felt. So, whatever. Everyone's like, kind of watching. And finally, you know, I think she kind of snaps out of it. Like, her, maybe she's on steroids or something. Her anger stops and she kind of looks around and realizes that everybody is watching her latched onto an 8th grader and not
not letting him go as we are all screaming, we're trying to leave. And uh, she lets go and that's enough. He breaks free like of her holding onto his hood and we just bolt. He left his broken skateboard there, dude. Trucks and all. He did not care. He's like, you know what? I'll just get a new one because he was not going to spend any more time there. We take off running as fast as we can. This dude is running on like a rolled ankle. I don't know if it was sprained or rolled. His ankle hurts and we just took off. So we get around the corner and we're like, oh my God, what was that? And <laughs> we're just all sitting there and like breathing really heavy because we just escaped Jabba the Hutt's clutches, you know? And the kid who got attacked is like, why did she want to fight me so bad? Like she kept challenging him to fight while she had him on the ground by the hood. She's like, why don't you get up and fight me like a man? <laughs> It's like, I'm not a man. I'm 13. I don't, I'm a child. I don't know what you want me to do. I'm not fighting you like a man because I'm not. I don't like what it, ah. 13 year olds are not men, by the way. Before anyone in the comments was like, whoa, when you're 13, bro, like your puberty started. When I was 13, I was like 5'2 and chubby, all right? I was not in the shape to be fighting Jabba the Hutt linebacker women who thought that the F word was the naughtiest thing to ever be said. Uh, yeah. Moral of the story is, Sometimes women really do be crazy and uh, men do be too. That's that's really all there is to it There's not really a good moral to this. Don't get attacked by crazy people at a park, I guess and uh, Yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was an entertaining story. I survived We all got matching t-shirts that says I survived a Wookiee attack, you know after the fact that we were just all so proud of ourselves <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Turn on notifications, too. I give a notification shout-out every day to somebody who sends me proof of their notifications being on on Instagram. So, today's notification shout-out goes to uh, BrodyC42. Big shout-out to you for having on notifications, man. I've been responding to more DMs on Instagram, too. So, you guys should go follow me on there. And, uh, yeah, if you really enjoyed the channel and you, like, want to support it a ton, there is merch. You guys should check it out. Teespring link will be down below. It's pretty dope if I do get to say so myself but on that note don't get anyone pregnant if you do as always make sure they're hot my name is scrubby hopefully i'll see you guys next time with another video i am getting over the flu but the only downside is now i have an ear infection because my body hates me so uh yeah wish me luck and i'll see you guys next time i am out three two one peace What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely incredible day I know I am if you are be sure to press the like button for good luck because uh, good luck is good today We're gonna be talking about a weird kid. All right This might be a little bit of a series if you guys are into the first little uh, time But it's basically this kid that uh, I went to high school with who ended up getting arrested for stalking and uh, I, I was talking to the girl that he was actually super into and this kid is super weird We're gonna start with the first story all right, which does not involve him getting arrested sadly But this kid had been weird for a while and I think you guys are gonna be entertained because for some reason Hearing about weird kid makes all of you guys go ha ha he he like button like like he like like and uh, I like likes You know so uh, without further ado, let's get it now for some reason I had a concentration of kids at my school who were the bizarre type uh, There was a group of kids that thought they were werewolves. No, I'm not kidding I've told stories about them in the past and this kid happened to be one of the werewolf kids I don't really know what what's going through your head to be actually actually 16 years old and convince yourself that you're a werewolf, but that's a pretty big gap in intelligence, okay? By the time you're eight, you should give up on your dreams of being a werewolf, you know? Like, huh, hmm, you know? I, I don't turn into a giant man beast every full moon. Maybe I should think about why that is. And the answer is because you're not a werewolf, Derek, all right? Grow up and take off the Batman cape. You're never going to become Batwolf. That would be a really sick superhero, but regardless, there were a group of kids at my school that thought they were werewolves, and they had this idea that they were, a uh, pack, right? And once you were binded with the pack, you were binded for life, which is super cringe because uh, the odds of you being binded with a bunch of kids who think they're werewolves in high school for the rest of your life is pretty slim. You know, in the grand scheme of things, let's be honest here. Nobody is like, ah, you know what friends I want to have for the rest of my life? My friends that think they are werewolves. Yes, those are the ones that I will love until I die. But there was this girl who was in the uh, wolf pack when she was a freshman, right? And, and they had this ritual where you had to like gather around them and they would all howl to together and that would mean you were a part of the group and once you were a part of the group you could never like <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just picturing a bunch of chubby white kids in Hot Topic clothing howling at each other for a lifetime bond. Whatever, kids are whack. Uh, anyways, 
And, and she was in this group, and uh, there was another kid in the group pack who I'm going to name <clears throat> Clarence, because Clarence is a funny name. And Clarence, you know, Clarence was a little bit of a bizarre dude, and uh, he had a giant crush on this girl who was in the wolf pack, so much so that during the ceremony, he tried to make up a rule that she had to kiss one of the wolves, and everyone else was like, no, no, no. And, I, and I've talked to the girl about this. The reason I know this is because she's not a, a werewolf anymore, you know? She kind of grew out of that. So, basically, this kid named Clarence had a ginormous crush on her, right? And he was really weird. I don't think he knew how to show people that he had a crush on anyone. Because this girl was telling me that when she was in the wolf pack and they would hang out all this stuff, obviously there were couples, they would, uh, there would be wolf people, that's how life would work sometimes, you know? Apparently, uh, uh, occasionally, you just gotta be with your wolf pack and squat up. But this guy would take the whole wolf thing a little bit too far. Like, he had a crush on this girl, right? And instead of just being like, hey, do you wanna go on a wolf date where we'll chase tennis balls and double dab in the park and pee on fire hydrants so he has a crush on this girl right and his idea of showing affection his idea of being like hey baby i'm into you isn't anything normal no 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 what he does and this is not a joke he goes and got roadkill off the side of the road, took it to her house, and, and had it in his mouth and said, I caught this for you. And obviously, the werewolf thing is weird, don't get me the wrong, the, the werewolf thing is super cringe, but even the girl at that point, who was a part of the group, is like, um, that's really weird. Like, let me get this straight, you have a crush on a girl, right? You're sitting there, mm, yo, this girl's a cutie dog, I can't get her out of my mind, I think about her all the time, I, I, I really want to make her mine, I'm ready for that next level of commitment, where we'll be in a relationship and howl at the moon together. What would I, what should I give her, you know? What do girls like? Flowers, uh, you know, they, they like chocolate, um, they like gifts, you know, jewelry, jewelry is always a good one. Man, maybe I should go find a dead animal and put it in my mouth and carry it to her. Like, bruh, how do you even come up with that? I'm sorry, I don't care if you're in a wolf pack or not. No girl wants a dead animal dropped off of their porch. What are you, a cat with a bird? Like, I'm sorry, Tom and Jerry, you might need to cool your jets a little bit. So obviously this guy is super weird, right? And, and this is where I come into the story. This is how I ended up getting involved. So, uh, anyways, this weird kid Clarence is is obviously really obsessed with this girl. He's dropping off dead animals on her porch, which is just the ultimate sign of commitment. You know, everybody knows if you get a dead animal on your porch, you're you're set for life, man. That's uh basically an engagement ring in the animal kingdom. Everybody knows that. So the girl though sat next to me in one of her classes. And I knew she was kind of one of the weird wolf girls, but she seemed relatively normal. Like, we got along okay. We, we weren't flirty. I wouldn't even say we were friends. We just kind of, like, sat next to each other. It was no big deal. No, no skin off our back, right? And apparently, Werewolf Boy thinks that I'm moving in on his woman, all right? He's like, listen, I've dropped a dead animal off on her porch. You're not allowed to look at her, think about her, exist with her. You're not even allowed to have classes with her. Because, uh, basically, I was walking through the hallways one day, right? Right? And, and I'm just walking. I'm literally minding my own business. I'm keeping to myself. I ain't got no beef with Werewolf Boy at all. Who cares? Like, I I'm sorry. I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to square up with a Werewolf Boy in the middle of the hallway. And I hear growling from my left. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. Is there a dog in the hall? And I look to the left, and there's... There's this kid wearing a dog collar giving me a dirty look and so I kind of laugh a little bit because what am I supposed to do with that situation? You tell me you wouldn't giggle if some teenager in a dog collar is sitting there barking at you like <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't take it seriously even thinking about it now if anyone growled at me now I would be nothing but lol the entire time. How in the world would I ever deal with it at all? So he growls at me, and I'm like, what, <laughs> you good, bro? You good? And he's like, why are you encroaching on my mate? Um, pause, dog. First of all, I don't know who your mate is. Second of all, your mate? Wait, are we in biology class? Am I learning about canines? Like, wait, bruh, no girl wants to be called your mate. I'm sorry. If you're dating a girl out there and you texted her right now, we're mates, I guarantee you she'd go, I'm not a big fan of this at all. Like, 0% a fan of this at all. And, uh, don't test that, alright? Actually, you know what? If you have a girlfriend that you're confident wouldn't break up with you, test it. Call your mate. See what she says. She's not gonna like it. So, regardless, I'm kind of like, bro, what are you talking about? And he's like, I've seen you sitting too close to my female, and I don't like it. And I'm like, what fe What female are you talking about? And let me give you guys a little hint. If you think a guy's hitting on your girl, and he doesn't even know what girl you're talking about, chances are he's not hitting on your girl. So he tells me your name, and I'm like, dude, listen, I was not hitting on your girl at all, werewolf boy, all right? Like, we sit next to each other, that's it. He goes, well, why do you sit next to her? Because the teacher made me sit there? Like, wait, <laughs> sorry that I don't have it control of the seating chart, man. Like, I, I'm really sorry. And he's like, well, you need to figure something out. Yes, because I, in my infinite power, control the seating chart for my class and can move my seat. So, whatever. He's like, this is your warning, and walks away. Okay. So, 
after he walks away, the girl walks up to me. And she goes, I'm really sorry about that. He's not even my boyfriend. Like, I don't know what's wrong with it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. He's just kind of whack. And is he wearing a dog collar? And she's like, yeah, whatever. The pack had a name. I'm not going to say it because you'll be able to tell what school I went to. But um, basically, he's like, our pack does it. And I'm like, oh, all right. That's kind of weird. But like, whatever. I mean, you do you. Just make sure he knows that I'm not, I'm not into it like that. Like, I'm really not into it like that. But whatever, homeboy really wants to be a wolf. So I'm kind of like, this is this is awkward and weird, but uh, I'll keep moving on. And uh, Clarence the wolf decides that, you know, that's not good enough. So the next day, I'm sitting in class, and he walks into class and walks us to the teacher and, and hands her a note. And the teacher looks at him and goes, who's this from? And he goes, me. And the teacher just says, get out. And, like, it's no big deal. I don't think anything of it. He's weird. He gives me a dirty look, but, like, all right, wolf boy, you do your thing, right? So, <laughs> after class, uh, my teacher kind of says, hey, come here. And I'm like, yeah, well, is everything okay? He's like, so this kid gave me a note basically saying that I had to move your seat. Do you guys have any issues or anything? So I tell my teacher kind of like, you know, basically this kid's weird. He's dating someone. Like, he's kind of weird. He's kind of whack. He, he's, he's, he's kind of a weird person. So now Wolf Boy is kind of encroaching on uh, my, my personal turf. So this guy's kind of causing issues, and the girl I sit next to feels super embarrassed about it because she doesn't want to cause issues. Like, I don't even know how she got into the Wolf Pack in the first place, but uh, she was pretty normal. Like, she was pretty cool, I guess. So she makes the decision to leave the Wolf Pack, right? Which is a big no-no. Like, in their group, they're like, you are in for life. You have become a Wolf member, and you shall be a Wolf member till your death! And then they, like, I don't know, headbang to some screamo music. I I don't really know what werewolves do in their spare time. Do they chase tennis balls? What what are werewolves into? These are things that I need to know. So she decides that she's gonna try to leave, and the guy takes it as me making her leave, like as if somehow I've kidnapped her and told her to leave the werewolf thing. Maybe she's just not into werewolves, bro. You ever think about that? Maybe humans, like actual human beings, uh, aren't into the idea of being werewolves. Isn't that wild? So she decides that she's gonna leave the wolf pack, and the guy kind of presses me about it after class one day. I'm walking out, and he's like, "Why are you making my mate leave the?" wolf pack and I look at him and I'm like bro I'm not into your girl I don't know what's going on between you two I I'm not sure all I know is what she told me and she told me that she's not into you and even then I'm not into her so I don't know who you've got beef with but it's not gonna be me like it's not gonna be me I'm sorry but I have nothing to do with it and after that point, I don't know if she talked to him or what, but I think he kind of got the hint that I wasn't involved. But sadly, the story doesn't end there, because I still sat next to this girl for the rest of the year. And as there was drama going on with Werewolf Boy, I would kind of get updates as she would tell me how absolutely insane this kid is. So I guess when she left the wolf pack, they were pissed, and they ended up egging her house, but she knew they were going to do something, and in the grand scheme of things, egging isn't going to be that big of a deal. But Werewolf Boy, and uh, this is confirmed from the rest of the pack that still talked to her, decided that he was going to drop a fat deuce on her lawn while they were egging her house. Like, he took it from a 10 to an 11. They were like, let's throw eggs at her house, and he said, let me poop on her lawn, and then actually did it. I I'm convinced the homeboy just really, really actually thought he was a dog for some reason, like peeing on fire hydrants, all that jazz. So after pooping on her lawn, I guess he also decided that uh, one dead animal wasn't enough and she woke up to another one on her porch. So she texted him and basically said, hey, leave me alone. I'm not a werewolf anymore. Uh, not that you ever were in the first place, you weirdo. And if you could stop leaving, you know, dead animals on my porch, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I guess he took this as a badge of pride because his response was to send a video of him snarling into the camera. She showed me it and the kid is literally like, you've challenged my pride. The wolf pack will destroy you like he literally sounded like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles villain from the late 90s cartoons so this kid is very obviously mentally unhinged and the next day at school uh, I was just talking to her in the hallway we were walking to our next class together and out of nowhere werewolf boy comes out the cut really looking like uh, I don't know some weird werewolf boy I wait he looks weird he's wearing a dog collar all right I don't I don't know how else to insult him he did it to himself there's no need to come up with an insult for somebody wearing a dog collar like they're wearing the insult what am I supposed to do ah he looked like he was a dork. Why? Well, I mean, he, he was wearing a dog collar. There's really not much else weird about him. I guess he was a little chubby, but that's life, you know. I'm not going to judge somebody for that. You do what you got to do. No, no pressure. So, regardless, uh, he's just a weirdo who's apparently challenging the wolf pack pride. So, we're, we're chilling, walking to class, and out of nowhere, Snarling Boy pulls up to us and starts pressing her. He's not pressing me. He's not like, I want to challenge you to combat. He basically says that, you've disrespected the pride, and for that, you will pay. You'll rue the day. You know the kid from iCarly? Uh, you will rue the day. That's what this kid's doing in the hallway. So, 
a teacher walks up and is like, is there a problem here? And the kid starts telling the teacher about how the wolf pack is a sanctity that you're supposed to be in for life. Yada, yada, yada. Just, just some weird stuff. And the teacher's kind of like, all right, we'll leave this girl alone because she clearly doesn't seem into this message and uh, go to class. And the kid's like, you'll never understand the wolf pack. Yes, that's right. Because the math teacher that just yelled at you is definitely sitting there saying, man, you know what I want to do with this college degree and my 10 years of experience teaching children? I really, really want to yell at kids that think they're werewolves. That is what I want to do with my day. So that's not the last time he tries to threaten this girl in the hallway. And call me crazy here, but you want to know how you don't get your crush back? Like, if your crush doesn't like you and you want her back, you don't threaten her in the hallway. Like, that's a zero out of ten. I'm sorry. That's a negative win in the point column. No girl's ever been like, man, I, I thought we were broken up. I really did until, uh, you know, until he threatened me, in which point I was like, yo, it's lit. Oh my god, we're meant to be together. So after this point, at school, he would leave her alone, but that wasn't the last that she ended up seeing of him in life. But, uh, that's gonna do it for this part of the story. We're already at 13 minutes, so all I'm gonna say is if this video gets 40,000 likes, I'll do the next part. Uh, it, it gets pretty crazy. Werewolf guy definitely becomes a little unhinged. There's a couple more parts I could do about this, but if you guys want it, let me know. If you don't, that's fine too. Like, I get it. No stress, no pressure. And, uh, yeah, on that note, though, that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate you pressing the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video and of course if you're new press the subscribe button and turn on notifications because uh i upload videos like this every day and you just don't want to miss it you know missing it is, is is very not good today's notification shout out goes to a very studly muffin the muffin that is a stud which is i'm looking for a name it's going through my dm n-p-a-e-w-m-v big shout out to you if you want a notification shout out all you gotta do is turn on notifications send me a screenshot of my instagram at scrubby and i shout somebody out every day but on that note don't get anyone pregnant if you make sure you're hot and hopefully i'll see you guys tomorrow with another video i'm out peace what's going on guys it's your boy scrub here back again with another video hope you guys are having a great day i know i am i understand that i've been gone for a bit okay i'm not gonna lie i've been uh, addicted to league of legends for like the past five days and Honestly, just wasn't feeling very good and didn't really want to make a video, so I didn't. I know, I know, Mr. Consistent Low-Key uh, let, let you guys down, but if you guys are having a good day like I know I am today, be sure to press the like button, otherwise, no joke, no scam. Your dad will leave to get milk and never come back. Yeah, that's right, guys, you're pressing the like button for a father figure. Anyways, guys, real talk, I did take last week off, zip on down to California, spent a night on a haunted ghost ship, which uh, sadly didn't see any ghosts, you know, I I was low-key like on my Instagram taunting these ghosts to come haunt me and uh, they just didn't but regardless after spending a night on the Queen Mary which is supposedly a haunted ship me and the fam bam decided to go to Disneyland you know and I'm a big fan of Disneyland all right I'm not gonna lie if that makes me a cornball then so be it I guess I'm a ball of maize because I do indeed love me some Disney and for the most part I've been at Disney long enough where like most of the basic stuff doesn't really impress me anymore you know I've talked to people that are like wow I love waiting in line at Disneyland because each line is so unique. Yeah, th that's not me. I'm not a big fan of waiting in line as neither is anybody else in my family, you know? Like, uh, I'm sorry, but standing still for 12 hours, slowly stepping forward with a bunch of families that smell like sunscreen around me is not my favorite part of an amusement park. Yeah, that's not like that. And the lines honestly weren't that bad at Disneyland, to be honest. They were pretty solid. But there was one ride that we had to wait about 45 minutes for. And 45 minutes of a wait is a long enough of a wait for me at an amusement park where I'm low-key starting to like look at my phone and overall you know try to entertain myself a little bit like I, I might be able to stay off my phone for a 15 minute wait you know something that's a little bit challenging but not too hard but 45 minutes plus bro that's not you know like waiting in line you could solve a Rubik's Cube in that amount of time with no experience whatsoever that's how you know the line is too long so whatever we're waiting in line for this ride in Star Wars land that's a little over like 45 minutes I think it was like a 47 minute wait and my family you know and I are just sitting there vibing and I'm pretty chill with my little brother you know he's a cool dude and I guess my parents aren't the worst ever I'm spending time with them it's a little awkward but we decide to play that game where like you put the phone on your head and have to basically play charades so it'll pop up and it'll be like Mickey Mouse you have to guess the person to guess Mickey Mouse's name you guys have probably seen it before it's just really good for wasting time in line and like I said once it hits 45 minutes I'm looking for any ways to entertain myself so whatever me and my family are playing the charades game I'm not gonna lie we're having ourselves 
ourselves a pretty good time. We're laughing, we're like joking around, obviously enjoying ourselves as a family, all right? It's not like some weird, you know, anti-social phone situation where Rebecca is texting her third boyfriend of the week and is like, oh my god, dad, you're so annoying. Like, we're low-key playing a family game together on the phone, but there's these old people in line behind us, and I guess, you know, the scent of having fun j it just irritated their boomer souls because what happens next is somebody taps my mom on the shoulder from like across us in line and is like, are you guys really so addicted to technology that you can't get off it for 45 minutes? And it's this old lady that low-key looks like Betty White, but like, not normal Betty White. If Betty White had a love child with Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars and was just low-key looking like she had been siphoning life out of preschool children that were also depressed, like, n not a good type of old, you know, but just old with like that stereotypical white grandma hair, you know? Betty White, I'm, I'm not trying to disrespect you. Betty White's a lovely lady, no disrespect. This person just looked like Betty's White's evil twin that had bad plastic surgery. So she taps my mom on the elbow and she's like, are you guys really so addicted to technology that you can't go 45 minutes without it? Hmm? Which I mean, first of all, low key is none of your business. If I'm waiting in line with my phone out, I don't really see what any of that has to do with you at all. But y you know how these boomers are, you know? And my mom, bless her heart, is a nicer person than me. Like, I don't really got patience for boomers, you know? I, I ain't really one to be out here just letting boomers yell at me for the fun of it, but somehow, my mom has the patience to politely explain to the lady, oh, you know, we're just playing a game to pass the time, ha ha. I, I do try to limit my younger one's phone time, but my older one's an adult, so he can do what he wants. And the grandma, like, huffs at my mom and is like, huh, some parent you are. No wonder kids are, like, going downhill. I, I, I knew that there were more loud kids at the park this time around. Which, I mean, low-key, kind of offensive to say somebody's a bad mom, especially when they brought their kid to Disneyland. Like, I, I don't think many bad parents are whipping the family to Disneyland, you know? So my mom is being nice and is like, oh, yeah, sorry, haha, -ha, sorry to bother you, and, like, puts the phone away. But, you know... I'm, I'm a little petty. I'm not my mom. My mom might just let herself get insulted by uh, Betty Crocker's evil twin, but that's not me. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen. So I do the only thing that I can. I whip out my phone and start playing TikTok as loud as humanly possible. Because if there's only one thing that boomers hate more than cell phones, it's loud cell phones. You know, just combine the things that they hate. So... The grandma lady is, like, giving me the evil eye, and my mom's like, Ryan, put your phone away, and I'm like, nah, nah, because I'm not getting told what to do by some boomer in line, all right? Like, if it was a worker, that's one thing, but some old lady that just doesn't like a family having fun, GG. And before anyone in the chat is like, oh, oh my god, Ryan, you're so mean. Like, all right, me and my family were playing charades, and this lady got involved to make sure that we stopped having fun. I'll, I'm not being mean, I'm just being petty. I'm not gonna deny that, but... Petty and mean are different. I can be mean and with, like, be petty. You know, they can be different things. So I pull my phone out and I'm playing TikTok as loud as possible. And the old lady finally decides to, you know, question me about it. Because uh, I guess she's had enough. So she goes, mm, can you turn that down? Some of us are trying to enjoy the atmosphere. And we're waiting in line. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Was it inconsiderate of me to get involved in things that don't, like, matter and interrupt your space? And she's like, oh, you think you're smart just because I told you guys to get off your phone like I'm sorry for wanting you to enjoy what you spent your hard-earned money on and I'm like listen lady we're waiting in line if we want to enjoy ourselves by being on our phone that's none of our business I'll mute it but next time you go to get involved in somebody else's life at Disneyland you just might want to remember that you're shrieking at everybody else to get off their phone is more annoying than anyone being on their phone ever could be and uh, the old lady low-key got pressed and I had to stand there awkwardly in line for like another 35 minutes after that uh, yeah, I did stand up to an old lady, you know, I'm gonna give myself a little bit credit there, but I'm also gonna make fun of myself because I really didn't think through the practicality of having to stand next to somebody that you just called out in line, like, telling this old lady that her voice is as annoying as blatantly loud TikToks, low-key sounds really cool, oh yeah, you stood up to this lady who was mean to your mom, but having to stand next to the person you just called out for an extended period of time definitely is awkward too. And I don't really know what was up with the old people in Southern California when I was there, but I had another incident with a boomer too. They were just really on a streak, you know, some lady that just apparently hated fun so much she had to ruin a family game of charades, SMH, you know. Oh, old people are really out there, but on top of that,
that. The second day we're in Disneyland, you know, I wanted to go early so I could ride the new Star Wars ride, which is honestly a 10 out of 10. Like, if you haven't ridden the new Star Wars ride, definitely would recommend it. You know, find a way to go to Disneyland, smuggle yourself in inside a Mickey Mouse costume, whatever you gotta do. It really slaps, but you have to get there super early. So it's before the park opens and we're waiting in line for security and the line is literally not moving. There's like nowhere to go because the park's not open. They're not letting us in through security yet. And it's me and my family and my family puts me in the front because they assume that I can be the meanest to old people, which I mean, you know, I, I just don't let boomers get their way without a, a little bit of payment, you know, no big deal, no big deal, obviously, I'm kidding, I'm nice to most grandmas, and uh, I'm in the front, and the line's literally not moving, there's nowhere to go, and I feel this thing, like, nudging my rib cage, you know, almost like a, a, an angry beagle sniffing something that's underneath you when you're sleeping, and they're, like, low-key touching the blanket with your nose, that's a very specific description, but uh, I, I feel like at least a couple of you understand what I'm saying, you know, and there's, like, this soccer mom, Karen looking figure just elbowing me to like push me out of the way and like I said there's nowhere to go it's not like I'm just standing in a line that's supposed to be moving so I like try to ignore her because low-key she really sucks at elbowing people in their ribs like it's really not hard to not be bad at getting an elbow inside someone's ribs and making it uncomfortable that's just a go-to it should be easy but for whatever reason she elbows me like a weakling so I'm just ignoring her that she's not there and finally the line starts to move and she's with her like entire family all of which look like they haven't showered in three three days, bro. Their hairs were so greasy, it could have started a grease fire. So the line starts moving, and there's, like, a line next to me where there's this family with two strollers, bro. And this lady elbows me out of the way and, like, pushes her way in between this family with two strollers. So now it's awkward because they have to talk around her, and they're, like, obviously being loud about how weird it is for people to cut in the middle of a group in line, you know, very obviously talking about her, and she ignores them, bro. So she elbows past the guy with the stroller and gets into another line and just, like, slowly gets left behind us so another woman I guess wanted beef tried to like elbow me out of the way for security and then when the line finally started moving invaded some other family's beautiful like stroller group and then ended up getting in probably 10 minutes after us because she kept jumping in longer and longer lines so I, I don't really know what was up dude but I guess old ladies doing things that makes no sense was really in style in Disneyland this trip so uh if you guys are gonna go, you should be good. I took care of all the angry boomers, so you guys should be able to have a good time. Uh, that's gonna do it for the stories, though. I'm gonna have a little channel update if you guys are interested, but that that'll do it for that. Uh, a little update. I know I've been gone. I didn't upload for, like, a long time. Four days, which is probably the longest I've ever gone without uploading. I don't know. I'm, I'm just feeling a little bit demotivated. It's nothing you guys can do. YouTube's just down. I'm gonna be doing better videos on the main channel, because low-key... They've kind of sucked for a bit, and I feel bad, and uh, I'll probably just keep posting on the Storytime channel a lot. I don't really know if daily is going to be a thing anymore, just because I want to make sure that all the stories are really good and actually entertaining for you guys, you know? And uh, I, I might not be able to do that every day, but seriously, though, I wanted to thank you guys all so much for the support again recently. Like, I, I understand that I've kind of been missing. I've been MIA. The quality ain't been what it used to be, but... I'm working on it, alright? I'm aware, and I promise that they're gonna be getting better. But, uh, on that note, guys, if you really want to support the channel, consider checking out the merch down below. It really does help, and, uh, other than that, today's notification shout-out goes to the very handy, awesome, and intelligent, swag-tastic, sometimes, occasionally, upside-down, Josh Fernandez. Big thank you for having on notifications. If you turn them on, send a screenshot to my Instagram, at Scrubby, and I, uh, shout somebody out every video. But on that note, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do make sure they're hot and uh hopefully i'll see you guys next time in another video i'm out peace buy that merch buy that merch <laughs> yeah joy to the world my merch has come uh, i i did release merch though other than that terrible rendition of a jake paul song you guys should go check it out also, while I got your attention, be sure to smack that like button like Mike Tyson smacking his disabled wife. That was a pretty bad joke, but it's funny, so I'm not going to apologize. And without further ado, let's get right into the story time. So I've witnessed my fair share of fights, okay? I went to a public high school. That means most kids are throwing fisticuffs like boxers in the end of the round, all right? Logan Paul KSI type stuff. And this is the dumbest fight that I've ever seen. These two guys literally tried to kill each other over a chair. No, that's not a joke. They actually beat each other over the fact 
that they couldn't get chairs in the lunchroom and someone stole the chair from somebody else. It's pretty stupid, but it's a good story, so I figured I'd tell you guys. So sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and get ready to listen to a fantastic story. So I set a lunch table for most of high school where me and my homeboys would, you know, grab our chairs, fly over to the table, and have a good time, goof off, do some water bottle flips, all the cool stuff kids do these days, you know. Water bottle flipping is a professional sport in seven countries. And, uh, we had this one friend named Patrick who was huge, okay? I'm a pretty tall guy, I'm like 6'2", 6'3", I'm not really sure. And this guy would tower over me, alright? He probably weighed about 250 pounds of pure muscle and was at least 6'6". This guy was a giant, okay? And he would always come to lunch a little bit late, but he'd always have no problem holding a chair or grabbing a chair because who's gonna argue with the guy that could literally punch a skyscraper and it starts to lean, bro? The Leaning Tower of Pisa happened because Patrick leaned on it, alright? So generally, nobody would mess with him because he was huge, and he was probably the biggest kid in the school, so it was just like a mutual respect thing. But one day, there's a new kid, and he claims to be, you know, a gangster, all right? Oh, I grew, I grew up in the hood, man. All right, well, listen here, Abercrombie and bitch. No, no way you grew up in the hood. You're not hard. You're not cool. Like, no one's impressed by you. But he really wanted everybody to think that he was the toughest guy in the school. So one day, he gets to lunch before Patrick and takes a chair, the last chair, and then just walks across the cafeteria with it, sets his backpack on it, puts his feet on it, and has two chairs. And so we're all like, oh my god, he's trying to fight Patrick, the biggest kid in the school, and he's like trying to start it over a chair. This is this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So Patrick gets to lunch and goes, hey, is there any chairs? And so we point and we're like, well, that's the only one left, and he's using it as a footrest. And Patrick was a gentle giant. He would never like fight anything, but you know, if, if you pissed him off good enough, he would definitely get a little angry. So he goes over there to the new guy and he says, hey man, like I see you're using the chair as a footrest. Can I, can I please have the chair? Like clearly it's a footrest for you. That's not really cool. Can I have it? And the kid just goes, nah, man, f uh, F you. Oh, I almost said it. Susan, Susan, listen, it was a joke. Please don't demonetize me. So Patrick just goes, all right, dude, like, listen, I tried to be nice. And he just takes the chair, flicks the kid backpack off, and then just brings it back to our table. So we think problem solved. The kid's not going to instigate it any further because that'd be a terrible idea because once again, this is a giant. So Patrick sits down and starts eating his pizza. And all of a sudden, the kid who he took the chair from runs up and hits him in the back of the head with a binder and starts punching him in the back of the head saying that he's disrespectful and how dare he take his chair and da 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 da. And our entire table is like, what is going on? And before any of us can get up and go help Patrick, Patrick has stood up looming over this kid who's probably a solid 5'6", I, I don't know, like a quarter of his weight. So before before we can react, our friend Patrick has this kid in a headlock on the floor and is like, knock it off. And this kid is just like, swinging at him. It's not hurting Patrick at all because once again, this kid's in a headlock. There's not much momentum behind anything he's doing. He's spinning in the air, hoping it lands on Patrick, saying that he's going to kill him. All over a chair, by the way. So the deans come over, and as soon as, like, the adults are there, Patrick lets go of the kid. He gets up and starts trying to throw chairs at Patrick, spinning at him, all this stuff. And Patrick's just laughing, which is making the kid more mad, because I guess when you're in a murderous rage, people laughing at you is not the reaction you want. And everyone's laughing at him, because he just got headlocked in 13 seconds flat, read like a little banshee, and then just got dropped. So whatever, you know, <laughs> they, they get him out of there, toothbrush angry kid who's like, Ray, I'm gonna kill you, Ray! And Patrick, instead of, you know, getting angry or, like, going to the Deans, just sits back down and keeps eating his pizza like the absolute savage he is. So for the rest of, uh, the school year and the rest of our high school experience, the kid that tried to, you know, murder someone over a chair was made fun of relentlessly because saying, I'm gonna kill you and spitting in somebody's face over a lunchroom chair definitely doesn't make you look cool like you're from the hood, which I think was his intention. It makes you look like an insecure little girl, which is not a good look, not a good look. And Patrick became a legend for just putting someone in a headlock that was trying to murder him and then going back to eating his pizza like nothing happened. Even the deans and, like, our principal staff were laughing at the fact that he was so calm after it all went down. He wasn't mad, he didn't have to be restrained, he was just like, Okay, I guess the guy that wants to kill me is gone now, do to do back to my pizza. Patrick really was a cool guy. He, I, don't, I don't know what he's up to now, I think he joined the military or something, but whatever he's doing, he's, he's a really good dude and I hope everything's going great for him. But yeah, that's the time I watched someone almost die over a chair. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the story, or not enjoyed, but found it entertaining. That, that's the better word. Hopefully you don't find that enjoyable. You guys are all incredible. Be sure to press the like button, comment down below, subscribe, all that Gucci gang stuff, and hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. I'm out. Peace.